Reed. Reed? Reed Darlington. That means that someone was calling about the Darlington case. A fact we already knew. <laughs> Let's see what else we can find. Hello. Look over here on the sideboard. Brandy decanter with a stopper left out. And one glass that has been drunk from. The killer must have had a drink after he shot the doctor. And in so doing, I think he gave us the clue to the idea. Oh, how? Night, everyone. Good night. I'm here. Most convenient. What does it tell you, Holmes? Wait a minute. Uh huh. I was right. This speck on the glass is wax. Wax? Then that means the murderer used a candle. Oh no, Watson. Come on. We must go back to the village and report his death, and then we'll catch the next train to London. Uh, aren't you going to stay here and help the police? Why should I? Beyond telling them the name of the murderer. You mean you know who did it? Of course. And so should you. Well, I don't. But we don't know the answer. We don't. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope everybody's having a wonderful evening. I went live right when Days dies. He's going live. I didn't know when he was going live. in Miss Harry's hand. Surely you didn't pay the blackmail. I discussed the matter with my wife, Mr. Holmes. She's deeply upset. We both agreed that the scandal, once started, would cling to us for life, even if it was disproved later. That's why I paid the money. You engaged me as your representative in this case, Lord Darlington. Miss Harris, give that money back at once. It was a gift from Lord Darlington, in front of a witness. If you try to touch it, I shall send for a policeman. But that won't be necessary. Two of them are waiting in the anteroom now. Police. Holmes, you shouldn't have done it. I wanted no breath of this scandal to emerge from beyond these four walls. The fact that police are here has nothing to do with the problems of blackmail. I brought them here to apprehend a murderer. A murderer? Well, what do you mean? Dr. Godfrey, your wife's physician, was shot dead during the past 24 hours. He was killed before he could tell us the true answer to the parentage of the child upstairs. Murdered? Dreadful thing. Have you any idea who did it? Every idea, Lord Darlington. But before I expose the criminal, I'd be obliged if you'd bring Lady Darlington here. And also the child. Very well, Holmes. This is going to be a terrible shock. You're suddenly very quiet, Tremaine. Am I? I was wondering who might have killed Dr. Godfrey. <laughs> I wasn't even speaking. Oh, goodness. Left a clue. After he'd committed the crime, he made the mistake of taking a drink. Darlington's quite a drinking man, you know. And you have been known to take a drink on occasions too, Mr. Tremaine. For instance, uh, after you'd killed Dr. Godfrey. After I... What rubbish are you saying? You see, the murderer left a tiny blob of wax on the glass. So what does that prove? What does that prove? But this wasn't candle wax. It was cosmetic. SBD Ivan? Who? 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 SBD? I don't know what SBD means, but thank you so much, SBD, by Ivan. Not necessarily. Even if it were true, the doctor was still a menace to his plans. How could he and Miss Harris ask the highest price for their secret when the doctor also knew it? No, Watson. Tremaine had a motive for murder either way. In the meanwhile, I must have What is the Twitter sizes? That's my question. Oh, here it is. Oh, my goodness. So many people liked my my photos. My pictures! I feel that it may give us the answer to a peer's inheritance. my soul, you're being very mysterious. In a few moments, I propose to conduct a test. You must hide outside the windows. When I turn down the gaslight over the man there, Watson, I want you to strike a match. Yeah, Watson. Get that shit together, Watson! Jesus! Cry out the word fire at the top of your voice. I think the results of the experiment may prove quite startling. I also need to change the size of this picture. I shall conduct my experiment. Very well, Holmes. I don't see why I had to bring the boy down here. It's long past his bedtime. I assure you, Lady Darlington, that his presence is absolutely essential. Please place him in the bassinet on the sofa. 
Yeah, put him in the bassinet. Will you be good enough to place your handbag on the table? Very well, Mr. Holmes. But no funny business now. The police took it away from Reggie and gave it back to me. That money's mine. Each of you ladies claim to be the mother of that boy. Since scientific tests of fair Oh, Jesus. Oh, are notoriously unreliable. Uh, I want both you ladies to come that. toward me with outstretched hands. That's it. Uh, I turned down the gaslight of the man. up the size. So. Ah! Ah! Oh, dear, the darling! It's all right, Derek. It's all right. If you look closely, you'll observe that this object is a perfectly harmless plumber's smoke rocket. Ah! You can drop the masquerade, Watson. The case is solved. Oh, no. Holmes, what on earth are you up to? You notice that on the cry of fire, Miss Harris ran for her handbag containing the ten thousand pounds. Lady Darlington instinctively rushed to her son. I think, Lord Darlington, that there can no longer be any question of the child's parentage. Midnight. <laughs> Long day, Holmes. Yes, but uh, profitable, Watson. A very profitable day's work indeed. Here's a thousand guineas from Lord Darlington. And uh, don't overlook the twenty pounds that Mr. Tremaine well, gave me. Sean, he retained you for protection, and you end up by sending him to the gallows. A fate that he richly deserves. I only wish I could have persuaded Lord Darlington to prosecute Miss Harris. Blackmail is a devilish crime. It's funny to think that a simple plumber's rocket smoked out the truth. Yes. Though, you'll remember, I've had occasion to use the instrument before. When a woman thinks her house is on fire, her impulse is at once to rush to the thing she values most. It's a perfectly overpowering instinct. Well, you certainly took advantage of the fact. Ah, well, Watson, you may remember the old Persian saying, there's danger for him who taketh the tiger cub, and danger for whoso snatches delusion from a woman. Oh, really? Oh, yes, Watson. There's as much sense in Hafiz as in Horace and as much knowledge of the world. Well, Dr. Watson, that was a very exciting story. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Incidentally, don't you think you'd better tell our listeners about the change of day and time for our next meeting? Yes, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, our next broadcast will be on Monday, January 13th, over these same stations. And better consult your newspaper for the time. Girls, have you noticed how men can't help but admire the bright, shimmering highlights in a woman's hair? Then why not follow the advice of the famous Million Dollar Powers models? Girls noted for their glossy, bright hair. Powers models wash their hair with cremel shampoo. This amazingly beautifying cremel shampoo actually glamour bathes each tiny strand of hair and uncovers all its natural radiant luster. Yes, and cremel shampoo never dries the hair. In fact, it has a beneficial oil base which helps keep the hair from becoming dry or brittle. Its luxurious active foam thoroughly cleanses the hair and scalp and removes all loose dandruff as well as the dirt. So, ladies, buy a bottle of cremel shampoo at any drug counter. See how easy it is to glamour bathe your hair to a vision of tantalizing loveliness. K R E M L, Kreml shampoo. Now, Dr. Watson, how about next week? It's not next week, Mr. Bell. It's a week from next Monday. Yes, of course. Well, what story are you going to tell us a week from next I Monday? I think I'll tell you about the Devil's Foot. The Devil's Foot? What was that? I won't tell you now, Mr. Bell, but I will say that Sherlock Holmes and I never encountered. More gruesome or a more horrible mystery. Tonight's new Sherlock Holmes adventure was suggested by an incident in Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's story, A Scandal in Bohemia. Nigel Bruce appeared by permission of California Pictures, Tom Conway through the courtesy of Eagle Lion Pictures. This is Joseph Bell speaking for Kreml Hair Tonic and Kreml Shampoo and inviting you to be with us one week from Monday, that's January 13th, when Dr. Watson will tell us about the devil's foot. <laughs>
ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. Kremel Hair Tonic and Kremel Shampoo present the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Starring Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson and Tom Conway as Sherlock Holmes. Well, once again, it's time to keep that pleasantest of all doctor's appointments. Our weekly visit with our excellent host and incomparable storyteller, Dr. Watson. Good evening, Dr. Watson. Ah, uh, there you are, Mr. Bell. Just in time to join me in a glass of port. The decanter's there on the sideboard. Help yourself and then settle down. Fine, Dr. Watson. I suppose you're all ready with tonight's new Sherlock Holmes story, The Adventure of Maltry Abbey, isn't it? Yes, my boy, and in many ways I'm inclined to think it was one of the most singular adventures that Sherlock Holmes and I ever had. But before I begin the weird adventure of Maltry Abbey, haven't you, haven't you got a word for our listeners? Yes, Dr. Watson, I have. Men, neat-looking, well-groomed hair does so much to give a man that air of success, to say nothing of adding to his good looks. And I'm sure you'll be interested in hearing about this modern trend in hair grooming, which has become such a nationwide favorite. It's called Kremel Hair Tonic. This highly specialized hair tonic contains a combination of hair grooming ingredients which is found in no other hair tonic. Yes, that's exactly why Kremel gives a man's hair such a natural, well-groomed look and keeps it in place longer, keeps every hair in perfect order from morning till night. Yet Kremel never gives hair that cheap, greasy, patent leather look. Kremel keeps hair looking mighty handsome with a rich, healthy-looking luster, yet it always feels and looks so clean on your hair and scalp. Men, if you aren't already using a hair tonic, try Kremel. If you're using some other hairdressing, Change to Kremel. Then see if your hair doesn't look better than it ever did before. Better groomed, better looking when you use Kremel. K-R-E-M-L, Kremel hair tonic. Now, Dr. Watson, how about the venerable bead and the adventure of Maltree Abbey? Well, Mr. Bell, that story began in Baker Street on the December afternoon many, many years ago. It was shortly after tea, I remember, when Sherlock Holmes, who'd been pacing up and down our room suddenly stopped at the window and looked intently out at the street below him. After a few moments, my curiosity overcame me and I joined my old friend. Looking over his shoulder, I saw that on the pavement opposite there stood a young woman dressed in the height of Edwardian fashion. She wore a fur boa and a broad-brimmed hat, from under which she peeped up in a nervous, hesitating fashion at our windows, while her body oscillated backward and forward. Suddenly... With a plunge, like the swimmer who leaves the bank, she hurried across the road, and we heard the clang of our front door bell. Took her a long enough time to to make up her mind, and home. Yes, Watson. I've seen those symptoms before in women. Oscillation on the pavement generally means an affair du coeur. She would like advice, but is not sure whether the matter is not too delicate for communication. She looks a pretty little thing. Perhaps some scoundrels jilted her. Oh, no, Watson. In such a case, the usual symptom is a broken bell wire. Here, I think we may deduce the young lady is not so much uh, angry as uh, grieved or perplexed. Why not meet her at the head of the stairs, old chap? Mm-hmm. I know Mrs. Hudson's rheumatism is bothering yes, her. Yes, sir. Of course I will. This way, young lady. It's all right. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. I'm, uh, I'm Dr. Watson. Won't you come along in? Thank you, Dr. Watson. Uh, this is my friend, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? I'm Sybil Carter, and I need your help, Mr. Holmes. Then please be seated, Miss Carter. I presume it is Miss, since I see no ring on your wedding finger. Yes, it's Miss. Though that awful man, Jonathan Davis, would like to make it Mrs. Oh, I can quite understand any man who wants to... Quiet, Watson. (laughs) Please tell me your problem, Miss Carter. Well, I can tell you in two words, gentlemen. Jonathan Davis wanted to marry me, and that was bad enough. But even to save the Maltry fortunes, I couldn't marry him. Now he wants Harold to leave the country and disappear. And when we think of the Abbey and the tenants, what can we do? I know that my brother's dead set against outside interference, but tonight is when we play the music. And if only you could be there. Well, that's, uh, considerably more than two words, Miss Carter. I'm afraid I can't make head or tail of any of them. Nor can I. Supposing you begin again and talk more slowly. Oh, <laughs> very well, Mr. Holmes. Uh, perhaps it'll be better if I ask questions. 
You mentioned your brother's title. May I ask what that title is? My brother's Harold Carter, the 14th Earl of Maltree, and the poorest. Confidentially, we're in a dreadful way financially. Harold invested in Canadian copper last year. The market dropped recently, and we were nearly wiped out. That's when this awful Jonathan Devers came on the scene. And who is uh, Jonathan Devers? Oh, he's a cousin of ours from South Africa. He's a dreadful bore, but extremely wealthy. And he wants to marry you, sir? Yes, but even for the sake of the Abbey and the Maltree fortunes, I couldn't do that. Now he's offered Harold 50,000 pounds in cash if he'll go abroad and pretend to disappear. You see, Jonathan Devers is next of male kin in line for the inheritance. So Mr. Devers is trying to bribe your brother to disappear so that uh, he may inherit the title and estates? Yes, Mr. Holmes. Mm. In this particular matter, I fail to see how I can help you. Oh, but you can, Mr. Holmes. You see, the first Earl of Maltree, he was created by Henry VIII, you know, left a family motto. It's inscribed in our private chapel at the Abbey. It says, if the Maltrees be in need, seek the venerable Bede. Beadle, some fellow who works in the parish, isn't he? Bede, Watson, not Beadle. Oh, oh Bede, Bede. Yes, spelt B-E-D-E. Oh, Bede. The venerable Bede, if I'm not mistaken, was an 8th century monk who is revered not only as a saint, but as the first great English historian. Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. We have a statue of him in the chapel, and then we have a family custom that... Oh, I know this may sound silly to you. Oh, don't worry, Miss Carter. I'm aware that some of these old, crusted superstitions often conceal surprising truths. Pray continue. Well, it's been passed down in the family that if ever the Maltrees were in trouble, they should play a bit peculiar piece of music which he composed. Piece of music? What, a, what an odd idea. Extremely interesting. And uh, you're planning to play the music tonight, you say? Yes, Mr. Holmes. Heaven alone knows the Maltrees couldn't be in worse trouble than they are now. And I want you to be there. Only Harold doesn't. So I thought, if you'd bring your violin, I could pretend that you would just come to hear the music. An excellent idea, Miss Carter. As I remember, Maltry Abbey is in Gloucestershire. Yes, Mr. Holmes, at Chipping Martin. An express leaves Paddington at 5.30. Perhaps we could travel together? Certainly. Mm, it sure seems like a wild goose chase, Holmes. Eighth century monk and strange music. Sounds like a lot of mumbo-jumbo to me. Where's your chivalry, Watson? In any case... Surely you recall the singular affair of the Musgrave ritual? There's no telling what these old family customs may portend. So be a good fellow and pack your bag. There's no time to be lost. I'll just have time to show you the chapel before dinner, gentlemen. Thank you, Lord Carter. And uh, after dinner, I shall be happy to gratify your musical curiosity, Mr. Holmes. But you mustn't regard my sister's visit today too seriously. Sybil's an overly emotional girl. Uh, I have so many projects to do. I will get them done. I trust that the music will live up to its magical reputation. I actually don't like this pose. Hold up. Century. The Abbey House was built nearly a hundred years later. Uh, hold your lantern a little higher, Dr. Watson. Uh, that's it. Now, I, I want to show you a prize possession. There you are. Magnificent. Quite magnificent. This, I presume, is the statue of the Venerable Bede that uh, your sister spoke of. Yes. It's an excellent specimen of 16th century wood carving. Uh, note particularly the delicate work on the beads. Fun, fun, fun. Art. Very odd indeed. What's odd, Holmes? The fact that the... How many times do I have to tell you to keep away from me, you filthy scum? Don't you take your whip to me, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing nothing. Oh, what the devil's going on out there? Come on. Confound your evidence. Take that. Oh, don't you lay your whip on me. Jonathan, what's the matter? I demand that you discharge this groom of yours. You can't whip me, Mr. Devers. I'll have your blood for this, I will. Well, what's he done, Jonathan? He's been following me. Twice today I bumped into him in the grounds. Not half an hour ago I was taking a walk by the bottom of the tarn. And I found him skulking behind me. Now I bump into him, sneaking after me here. I say you must discharge him. Well, he was only hired today. And... Ah, I suppose you're right. Wilson, you may collect a week's wages and leave in the morning. I wasn't doing no harm. Just trying to deliver a telegram. That's why I came here. Is one of you gents, Mr. Sherlock Holmes? I am he. Then this telegram come for you. 
I was only trying to find you when this son of a South African Wait, slave driver comes in. Oh, I'll have your blood, you see, if I don't. That's enough, Wilson. Now clear off. I'm sorry, Donovan. Oh, by the way, this is Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Mr. Donovan Devers. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Devers? Ah, uh, yes. Sybil told me that you were having distinguished company at your musical soiree tonight. How are you, gentlemen? Excuse me. See you at dinner, no doubt. Sybil, that poor devil of a groom was hardly sorry. Mr. Devers mentioned that he was walking by uh, the bottomless town half an hour ago. What, may I ask, is the bottomless town? Oh, I'll be right back. It's a legend that it's fathomless. All I know is that some years ago, a prize heifer of mine was seen to fall in and drown. We dragged the lake, but no grappling hooks we could obtain touched the bottom. Interesting. Holmes, uh, the telegram that fellow brought you. Ah, oh, yes, the telegram. Uh, give me the lantern, Watson. Uh -huh. Thanks. An extremely illuminating message. Read it for yourself, Lord Carter. Well, it says nothing but my cousin's name, Jonathan Devers. And yet the message is quite eloquent. It is in answer to a query I made before leaving London. Who forced that market drop in Canadian copper which wiped out the Maltree fortunes? You mean that Jonathan deliberately smashed me, Holmes? It would seem obvious. Yes, it's perfectly clear the devil's covets the title and stop at nothing to get it. Oh, Holmes, what am I going to do? What the devil am I going to do? We must wait until after dinner and hope that the musical composition may give us a solution to your unhappy problem. <laughs> Now that Sipple's played that rather dull piece of discordancy, I hope you're all satisfied. Naturally, the Maltree fortunes will be restored. Very funny, Jonathan. What do you make of it, Mr. Holmes? It's uh, curious. Very curious. Will you repeat that principal theme again, please, Miss Carter? Yes, of course. Thank you, Miss Carter. I think I begin to get a glimmering of the mysterious message. Yeah, blessed if I do. Sounds like a jumble of meaningless notes to Never me. Never mind, Dr. Watson. Your brilliant friend thinks that he saved the Maltry fortunes. In that case, Harold, I suppose you won't need to see Mr. Alexander in London tomorrow. Why, how did you know that? Let your solicitor plan to start bankruptcy proceedings at the latest tomorrow? <laughs> I, too, have my investigators, Harold. They seem a bit more efficient than your great Sherlock Holmes. Good night, Sybil. Good night, gentlemen. Uh, there you are again. What are you doing, listening at the door, you open swine? I was just going to the kitchen. Oh! Uh, get to this table where you belong. I see that groom again, Harold. I'll break his neck. See that he goes tonight. How dare he speak to you like that, Harold? He's not master here. Not yet, Sue. But I can't hold on to the place much longer, and he knows it. Mm, thoroughly unpleasant scoundrel, if you ask me. Mr. Holmes, you said the music gave you some clue to the message? It did, Miss Carter. But uh, it requires thought and a certain amount of uh, musical experimentation. I doubt if this music room would welcome the consumption of an ounce or two of shag tobacco. I think, therefore, that Watson and I will retire to our own room. With the aid of a pipe and my violin, I shall give the matter undivided attention. And tomorrow... Tomorrow, Moultrie Abbey will go into receivership. Not while Sherlock Holmes is on the case. Oh, thank you, Watson. A man of my... Uh, peculiar modesty and needs your constant reassurance. Uh, I could finally sleep at home. Then why not go to sleep, my dear well, chap? How can I when you keep scraping away that wretched fiddle? A lot of rubbish. Sit up half the night. We'll get you. Oh, yeah. I'm going to sleep. When the Maltrees are in need, seek. 
the venerable bee. This music will solve the Moultrie's problems. You can't whip me, Mr. Devers. I'll have your blood for this, I will. Too bad that your solicitor is starting bankruptcy proceedings tomorrow. You must help us. You must. When the Maltese in need, seek the venerable bee. I've got it. Watson, wake up, wake up. Uh, 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 what's up, Holmes? I've got the answer, Watson. I've solved the musical message. Before the night is through, I think we shall find the secret of Maltry Abbey. <laughs> Just a moment, we'll rejoin Sherlock Holmes and discover just what that secret is. Leading hair specialists in this country constantly advise us to take better care of the hair we've got. And men, don't forget that if you want your hair handsome and healthy looking, one of the first requirements is a hygienic scalp. And why settle for just any hairdressing when you can enjoy the extra advantages of Cremel hair? Cremel is a highly specialized. Oh, mass. I'm in the middle of other of things. Oh, goodness. How have you been? Hope you've been great. Yeah, it is going to be pretty. I hope you like her. I mean, it's... It's for you. Cremel actually helps condition the hair in that it makes it feel softer and more pliable. So men, take better care of the hair you've got. Buy a bottle of Cremel at any drug counter. Ask for an application at your barbershop. Use Cremel daily for... I was gonna... I was gonna... See how you were doing. I wanted to make sure you were okay. Cremel hair counter. Well, Dr. Watson, I, I'm just as confused as I'm sure you must have been when Sherlock Holmes awakened you. What was the musical message? Supposing I tell you the story in its actual sequence, Mr. Just, uh, just checking up on my friends. Holmes and I stealthily crept down the corridor to Lord Carter's room. A few moments later, the three... I don't know what you want for this character. ...leading to the main hall. Holmes, as we went into Lord Carter's room, I'm sure that it's certain that I saw another door down the corridor half open and, and then closed. Which door was it? The last one on the right. That's Jonathan Zither's room. Well, I suppose he knows that we're up to, which I must confess is more than I do. Well, they find right not even Devers can stop us now. You're being confined in mysterious homes. Will you tell me why we're heading for the chapel at two in the morning? In a few moments, I shall make the reason extremely clear to you, I hope. Yeah. There's the door. I hope you're doing incredible. I think you are. You're so incredible and amazing. Stupendous, even. Hopefully, that's all we can hope for. Focus your lantern on the statue of the Venerable Bee Watson. That's where the answer to the mortuary legend lies, I think. For heaven's sake, Holmes, I wish you would be more explicit. Very well. Let me see if I can whistle those notes written in the musical theme. Oh, yeah, whistling. Whistling gets under people's skins in recording. It's so weird. Are you gonna? What you up to tonight? Anyway, or today? Oh yeah! See. Thank you. You yourself pointed out the rosary on the venerable bead statue, Lord Carter. The notes B E A D must refer to the beads of the rosary. That's why I became suspicious on first seeing the statue. The rosary did not come into use till almost five centuries after the Venerable Bede. Yet, his statue had one. Um, what does the repetition of the note D four times mean after the melody? I think it gives us the vital clue. D is the fourth letter in the alphabet, and it's repeated four times. Let's see what happens when we press the fourth bead on the Venerable Bede's rosary. So, I Yeah! Yeah! Let's see what it takes us to. 
What kind of what what what's her hairstyle anyway? I don't. I didn't know what you wanted as a hairstyle or anything like that. I hope so, Lord Carter. I hope so. Watch your head, Watson. Oh, built these steps of pigments. Holmes, do you suppose we'll find any hidden treasure down here? Yeah. In a few moments, there will be no need for conjecture. Holmes, I'm afraid we've drawn a blank. What's wrong, Lord Carter? Look for yourself. Hmm. Deserted crypt. Yeah. Crucifix, Bible, Already coming together automatically pretty fast. I'm getting better at quick fucking faces. Let me, let me round our face out just a little bit. A softer face. Cool. Yes. 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 Shot. Shot. What? There's so many. I'm so, I'm so proud of you. I am very proud of you, Masolatov. Going, going to school, higher education. That'll be so good. Like this? So I'm looking for some place to dispose of it where it may never be recovered. The fathomless lake on this estate. Better be the place, the bottomless tar. Of course. Ah, oh, so cute. Then let's go there as fast as we can. I can only play that we're not too late. What are you talking about? Your faces are really good. I showed you I showed uh some of my friends your artwork and they were like, oh my god. And also, I use re look at me. I use references. You're okay. Oh. You devil. God damn. I try my best. That sketch that I did took a good hour, half of it was erasers and fix. I mean, look at what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing, lad of. Don't put yourself down. We, we want you to. You're an amazing artist. You're so talented. And anybody else that follows me, you guys are talented. Also, <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, that's that's fucking incredible, right there. We're gonna. We're, 
certain glow of satisfaction. The fortunes of the Maltrees are restored to the villain foiled and in custody. Yeah. And, uh, and Scotland Yard get the credit. You know that, of course, Holmes. Well, they deserve it. Oh. Uh. But later, I hope you have an amazing night. You see, Maltry Abbey was, uh, from its name, one of the properties expropriated from the monks by Henry VIII, who created the earldom. Undoubtedly, the abbot had hidden the monastery's most valuable possession, the bead manuscript. Well, I suppose the first earl discovered the hiding place and left the book there as a future security for the Maltry family. Exactly. Leaving the cryptic verses a clue. The Maltrees be in need, seek the venerable bead. Yes, I, I see it all now. You know, Holmes, to me the whole case was worth it when I saw that girl's face light up as we told her the good news. I fear that I'm less impressionable, old chap. For me, my retrospective pleasure in this case lies in the fact that an irreplaceable treasure has been saved and uh, that a monk who died 12 centuries ago will have been responsible for restoring the fortunes of a fine old family. Yes, yeah, vibe with me. Vibe. <laughs> Just start getting weird about it. Vibe. Doctor Watson will be back in just a moment to tell you about next week's story. Ladies, you've heard it said that a woman's hair is her crowning glory. How true this is. Oh, yeah. That's why you ladies should take the very best care of your hair, especially in shampoo. You hear that, ladies? I point out, Mr. Bell, because many popular shampoos have a tendency to dry the hair. Well, here's one shampoo that will never dry the hair. Never under any circumstances. And it's Cremel shampoo. Yes, Cremel shampoo is simply one. If you want, I can change the music or, uh, if you want. It's all good. Leaves the hair simply gleaming with natural glossy luster. And what's more, your hair stays this way for days. Cremel shampoo is not a soap shampoo. It's not a cream shampoo. It's not a drying detergent. It's entirely different. Cremel shampoo whips up a luxurious. Yeah, it's entirely different. Even it doesn't shampoo. work. You can use it as often as you wish over a long period of time, and it'll never dry your hair. In fact, Cremel shampoo <laughs> is a built in oil base which actually helps keep the hair from becoming dry or brittle. Remember, ladies, the divinely beautiful Powers models wash their hair with Cremel shampoo. They claim no other shampoo... <laughs> it is my stream, but you are watching it, and I want to be... I want you to enjoy it just as much as I am. Now, Dr. Watson, what about next week? I want you to have just as much fun as I have while being in this... Incredible night. To me, it's 107 in the morning. And I want everybody to enjoy themselves. Oh, thank you. It's just the perfect time for me. Inviting you to be with us next week at the same time when Dr. Watson will tell us about the adventure of the tolling bell. Let's... Wait, that's what ABC stands for? I'm dumb. I've been listening to this for a while, and I literally just figured that out. I was like, what? What's going on? <laughs>
Good evening, Dr. White. Good evening, Mr. Bell. As usual, you're punctual to the minute. Draw up your chair and make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Yes, I see that you have the old black tin dispatch box out again, Dr. Watson. I deduced that you were going over your notes on tonight's case. Elementary, my dear boy. And <laughs> among the records, I came across some notes of cases that I'd almost forgotten. The shocking death of Crosby, the banker. The Adelton tragedy. Some data on the unusual contents of the ancient British barrow. No. Your stories sound pretty intriguing, Dr. Watson. <laughs> I shall tell them to you some other evening, Mr. Bell. Tonight, I'm going to recount an adventure... I don't actually know... What to do for the head for the top of the head? Probably. A, oh, that would be cute if I put a flower up there. You, what do you, what do you, what would you like on the top of the head? Or are you just vibing? If you vibing, that's fine. Yeah, some flowers in the hair. Yes. I'm just fine. I'm just getting a little bit more comfortable. Enjoying myself. Just setting up right over here. Just making it real nice. We heard the funeral bell tolling earlier on. Do you know who was being buried? Since I've been streaming. Do you know how many people have asked me? Like, what are do you have commissions? When's your commissions open? <laughs> it's crazy. I thought there was thousands of artists out there. I'm just talking candidly with you because I know, I mean, you understand as an amazing artist yourself, once people figure out you're an artist, it's, it's crazy. What? What? I have no style. I have no grace. I have a funny face. <laughs> You uh, heard about the murder of Mrs. Treadgold, I suppose. Heard about it. I told the bell this morning at the funeral. He has no style. He has no grace. This conk has a funny face. You're a busy man, Gillian. That I am, sir. Take this afternoon now. 
I say that I have to have a style of some kind. I'm like, oh man, I don't have a style. I don't have nothing. It's like, what, are, what am I talking about? I have to have something. Because pe I can't keep getting compliments and saying, I don't have that. Uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Acting real stupid about it. No, I have a style. I obviously fucking have a style. Mm. And thank you. I do appreciate it. I don't know. Her smiling just doesn't feel right while walking into a uh, into a battle scene. I would say. She's a Joan of Arc kind of person where it's like, she is battling to do it. Oh, thank you. I mean... He left me four months ago and I've not seen any ride of him since. You've had no yeah, since you left. it no is different and cool. It has a bit of everything. Uh, my style has a bit of, like, American, uh, has a lot of American influences, and also a lot of uh, manga influences as well. Like, my style obviously has a lot of influences from other stuff. But that's... That's everyone's style. They, you're always probably going to be influenced by other things, like outside forces, uh, not a part of your control. Like it, it's just the nature of art in it in and of itself. I shall give your problem some thought. If I arrive at any conclusions, I'll get in touch with you at once. God bless you, Mister Holmes. So I have a lot of American influences and a lot of like Japanese influence as well. So, her thighs are thick but not dummy thick. They let's say about like that. Let's say like that. And she's gonna have her flag like this. And then, kind of a dress-like thing like that. Since you didn't give me any references of, like, what her armor is, I assume I assume you, you wanted me to kind of go ham on it and be like, yeah, do whatever you want. Aww, thank you, Ladev. You are too sweet. You are a sweetheart. You get you. You are so sweet. You. Yeah, I assumed. I assumed if you you were like yeah whatever. Uh, does she the country she comes from have a certain symbol or anything like that? Uh, does, has your, uh, if you're playing a Dungeons and Dragons game and you're just in it, it is, uh, has your, uh, Dungeon Master told you or is this your own character? If it's your own character and you're giving me complete, com uh, freedom, I'll just do the floor de lis. Not, not too difficult. You know the floor de lis? Also known as the flower, uh, the flower of power. <laughs> the flower, Denise. The flower of power. Oh, 
Oh goodness. Oh goodness, dog. Difficult flower, but I'm down for it. Difficulty means that you're growing. I mean, literally, I just need to uh, get it down. Because the my main character's uh, symbol, his name is literally Rose. His last name is literally Rose. Like, I have to accept that I'm going to have to draw a lot of roses. Why do you come here? da So, what's the new school you're going to get into, if I may be so bold to ask? What you thinking about? You had a letter from a lady. How do you know from a lady? It reeked with the smell of violets, it did. And it was written in green ink on grey paper, sir. Amazing deduction. That sounds like your young friend from Daly's, Watson. Right. I mean, I don't have a young friend from Daly's, Watson. Right, right, right. Gilly. Agree. Uh, it's got it's got a lot of symbolism to it. Not gonna not gonna fight you on that one. Something like that. Yeah, see, it's exactly what you you told me you were switching. So, have you seen the campus you're going to, or what? What's up? Yeah, see, a bit of control in your life. Things are changing, and. You got a cool friend on the internet. He went away, all right. but he never from the America Land. You you have a friend on the internet from Eagle Land. No hint of any kind, Mary. Well, he did once say, Mary, I'm going to clear out to this pub and make my fortune, even if I have to bury it. And then he said, bury my fortune. That's a joke, isn't it? I think I do, Mary. Watson? You're growing in life and you know, you're you're gonna start, you know hopefully stream a lot. Hopefully we get I get to see you uh or hey, maybe we could do <laughs> maybe we could uh possibly one time do a uh, collab or something like that. Maybe we could uh, we could have a some some time to draw or something like that. That would be fun. Get some get some drawing or something like that. That would be fun. Let's see. Rows like that. So, uh, wrap it around the flag. So, does, is there another symbol? What? From what I saw, you were doing pretty darn good. 
Don't, don't. <laughs> From what I saw, pretty dang great. God damn it, that looks like a lily. Oh god. I'm gonna have to look at the tutorial again. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh well. Oh well. His life. You're awesome on your own. You're a, you're a really good creator, and you're only gonna get better. And you have you have a you have great amount of followers. You're just starting out. You're doing incredible. And you also know exactly what you want to do. Which is far more than what I wanted to do. And if you're still in school, I'm pretty in. You're still with your parents. I'm pretty sure you're you're kind of young. So you're old enough to, you know. You're old enough to make your the big decision in your life. And it's good. You'll get the and if you feel like you're not up to stuff, well, you gotta keep going. I wanna see I wanna see you improve. I know you can. I know you got it in you. Mary, darling. It's alright. I'm here. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. I thought you never would. I tried to kill Don't we all? You know, we, we're all trying to get better. We're all trying to improve. I mean, every artist you see, whenever you, you see them drawing, they're improving. You know? They're always growing and stuff like that. Then you also see the other side of it, which is, hey, could you draw me this? Oh, man, hey, could you draw me this? So you're, you're doing way better than most. So don't, don't, I know that you're, you're trying to keep your head out of the clouds. Sometimes, you know. Dreaming big is good. To spring it, I shall need your assistance. Of course, Miss Bell, I'll be when it. Wait here with Mary until darkness falls. Then muffle yourselves up and go to your mother's house. Setting goals in life is good. You know? Hey, what do, what do you want to do with your life? Well, I want to make a comic book. Understand, Tom? Yes. Good. Then come on, Watson. How do you do that? Well, you set a goal. You you start writing it out. You you uh you make mistakes. You you try to put it on paper as best you can. You learn from what you you can do and what you can uh you can't. Okay. All right. Good. You're a lot better than most people. A lot of people just think, oh, why don't I have it just yet? Why don't I have it? <sighs> but what's your dream? Unless it's something you don't want to tell me. And that's fine. It's totally fine. You're like, well, I, wanna, I, I want to be closer to it before I reveal it. I don't want to be, uh, you know, I and I would get that. I'd understand. Like, as someone who wants to do this. Well, what, what is it?
Good morning, Gilly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We haven't come up here to see you at work, Gilly. We know your diabolical work only too well. Yes, Gilly, we know your secret. What secret is that? You're mad with power, Gilly. You've tried to control the destiny of the village. In your position as uh, But now I just want to make content, whether it's art, videos, or stream. I want to make people happy. Because that's what I always felt when I watched my favorite streamers and YouTubers. Fame is part of it, but like knowing I could make people's day would be the biggest reward for me. Well, you're doing a great job so far. You've made my day. Wanting to better yourself, not wallowing in, so, in, in, uh, in it. Just Accepting that life is difficult, and then uh, moving on, and working towards a goal. I mean, the, the biggest question that I always have is like. If you had to put me in a category, what would that category be as an artist? Like, what what would that category be? I always, I always have that big question. Because every year I ask it, because I, I want to be... I want to be in the category... I mean, yeah, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm not, I'm not incredible. I'm not amazing. I'm just me. And I'm going to be amazing. I'm going to be incredible. It starts with each step of the road. Hard, difficult, and not easy. I mean, that, that's, I mean, I'm pretty big in the art community, but that's good. I mean, I would love to be bigger in the art community. I would love to be everybody's, like, go-to. W-D-Y-M. Huh? Nani? <laughs> Nani? <laughs> One. Uh, un chato. Uh, si vous plaît. What do you mean? Uh, oh, okay. Um, like. America, American, uh, Japanese, uh, European, uh, Australian. Then there's chibi, photorealistic, uh, like stuff like that. Like that's that's what I'm asking. It's like, where, where would you put me in? Obviously not photorealism. Never photorealism for this, for this lad over here. I only ask, you know, 
I've been told many different things by many different people, and I just don't get it. Uh, so, like, Goat Paws says, I kind of draw like a 90s, uh, 90s cartoon. And then, uh, someone else was like, oh, yeah, no, you're like, uh, you're like, a, a Marame. And then somebody else is like, oh, yeah, no, you're, you're 100% American, uh, trying to imitate, uh, Japanese comics. Kept your promise to open your dispatch box. I just draw what I like, man. Indeed, I have, Mr. Bell, just as I promised. And a most macabre adventure it was, too. I'm eager to hear it. So you show, Mr. Bell, so oh, you show you. the first. Uh, am I correct in deducing that you have, you'd like to have a word with, uh, with our listeners? <laughs> a most accurate deduction, Dr. Watson. Thank you so much. Yes, I do appreciate it. To look handsomely groomed from morning and now, morning. remember, he's got this. Time. Don't, don't tell no one. She's got a little lace. She's got a little lace on there. This wonderful like natural looking hairdressing has just enough light oil to keep hair perfect. I like a little lace. Attractive, healthy looking luster. Yet Kremel never gives hair that offensive, cheap, greasy look. Kremel always looks and feels so clean on both hair and scalp. Try it, man. K R E M L Kremel <laughs> hair time. Now, Dr. Watson, what about the adventure of the Carpathian horror? It all began with this very letter which I have here in my hand, Mr. Bell. A letter from a most prosaic person. Oh, thank you. Holmes and I were at breakfast one spring morning. You, you wouldn't, you'd be surprised of what I was inspired to, uh, when I was a kid to draw. You'd be like, oh, I get it now. I get where all this is coming from. It's all from Garfield. You can thank Garfield for this. That's right. You can thank Garfield for this. That's what inspired me to draw all those years ago. It was Garfield. <laughs> that sassy, fat ass Garfield. Sir, our client, Count Paul Romani of Grasnia in Carpathia, whose trustees we are, has made inquiry from us in a communication of even date concerning if you don't know who Garfield is just Google and then you'll realize the insanity if you're like I don't know what the fuck goat is talking about right now just know that that's where it all spawned. All this art, all of it, Garfield. Every little bit of it was Sonic the Hedgehog and Garfield. I've always wanted to try the lasagna in Garfield. It sounds delicious. John Arbuckle must make a mean lasagna if Garfield is... Always trying to steal his lasagna. He must make a delicious homemade uh like it must it must be the greatest. Of all time. Yeah, big battle is home. He's home from work right now. I wasn't going to acknowledge him until somebody else did. <laughs> no, big battle's awesome. Big battle's awesome. Me and him are gonna fight though. Me and him are gonna smash armies together. We're gonna we're gonna smash our armies together. Yeah. That is a cool, cool person. 
I don't know, uh, I don't know what Ladab wants me to call them. Uh, I will, I will not assume anything. Yeah, we're gonna smash armies together. We're gonna, we're gonna, uh, you're gonna take your dwarves, I'm gonna take my rats. And we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, smash them together. Or we're gonna take your, uh, your horrible, horrible death watch. And I'm gonna beat them up with my orcs. But since they have Xenos and everything, I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think I'm gonna do too well. But I think my vehicles are gonna do just fine. No, what? I would never hurt anybody. Physically. I would never hurt anybody physically. Remains unmistakable so Lattab's awesome. Lattab's incredible. Lattab's a fun person. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> heels, please. Giving them free heels. I don't know just how much my solicitors in London may have told you, Mr. Holmes. A very little, Count Romani. Uh, so little, in fact, that I must confess my surprise at your perfect command of our language. Oh, my father... Already asking for money, Lado. Good job. Good job. I, I That's right. To begin, you get that money. You deserve it. <laughs> Perhaps it'll make it a bit easier for you if I tell you that Mr. Atterbury showed me your letters to him. I got a bar tab. <laughs> I got a bar tab. <laughs> oh, Dr. Watson will bear me out, Count Romany, when I tell you that uh, people who really are... I had some... Never think it of uh, I pre... I pre... I, I did it a little bit beforehand, so... Uh, I mean, you can't give me too much credit. Give me enough credit, though. Give me some credit. Be like, oh my goodness. He sketched, uh, he, he was so fast at his sketch. I have seen, there's one artist that I'm following, uh, Unistar. She is a monster. She can sketch it out in like less than 20 minutes. And then have it ready. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, that was the remote control. I was I was confused. Ugh. Unistar is uh, a furry artist that I just recently started following. So, you know, too much. She is so good. Uh, I mean, I can send you her stuff to show you, like, she's such a good artist. She's such a good furry artist. I have to put that caveat there because a lot of people are like, Oh, she's a good artist? Oh. Oh, she draws. She draws that. Where I am a all-arounder, don't give a shit. Uh, this is for Ladov. Uh, Lad of, uh, this is for Lad of his Joan of Arc character. So I made, made Lad of their Joan of Arc character. My door was still locked, but the rug bore the imprint of wet and naked feet. And across the foot of my bed, yeah. still dripping. Well, I mean, look at your avatar, Massa Lad of. Have you seen your avatar? Yes, my boy. Are you by any chance subject to walking in your sleep? No, no. Like, furry artists are insane. I guess it's the the fact of, like, everybody puts them down. So now they're just incredible. Jen the Vac, yeah! Jen the Vac. And uh, her main weapon is a, uh, is a flag. 
but just in case there's always a side piece, you never know when a sword is necessary. You'd be surprised how many how many scrapes you can survive with a little bit of ingenuity in a sword. I mean, I could put a morning star, but for a moment I thought that nothing was wrong. Then, yeah, Miss Letta, are you a furry? Mass, you know you can, you can be a furry if you want. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What are you? A furry? Me? Mm. Well, Krabby Patty. Skip these eyes they gave first. Me to make me sleep when sleep was the one thing I dreaded. Also, I'm gonna move this head just, just, a, just gonna move this head just a little bit. This, don't worry. He's just gonna have slight head surgery. Don't worry. He's gonna be fine. He's gonna be fine. Slight head surgery. Just, okay. it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay, everybody. But if you're a furry on my on my stream, it's fine. You can be a furry. Same that standard bearers don't get uh, get better melee with the flags of Warhammer. Color guard is awesome and descended uh, from martial arts. Oh, that's cool. I mean, my flag bearers are just fine. I don't know about your flag bearers. But my flag bearers uh, are radical as shit for both the Beastmen and the Skaven. I don't know. I don't know what you have. Guys, we're we're waiting for the for it to load. It's taking its sweet fucking time. Oh my god. Come on. <laughs> uh, so how's everybody's day been? My day was good. I took care of Frozen. It was an interesting time. We reset the whole Frozen. Oh, gosh. It was exciting and incredible and stupendous and amazing. And come on. Come on. You know what? There we go. There we go. I just want to... I'm slightly moving it to the left. Just slightly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Its abilities are probably really good, though. Like, if mine are any indication of, of, like, the abilities it can give a unit, like, a flag bearer can be pretty banned. Yeah! I will assess away. Oh my god. If it's not one thing, it's a fucking another. Jesus. What's up? I thought you were on watch. All right. Dropped off. I can't understand. Have to wait. Okay. All right. If you say it looks good, show. I will see it. I will be the final. If you need me to be the final judge, I can be the final judge. It's fine. 
feel his pulse. He's only fainted. Now, what happened? I, I heard him cry out. Ran down to his room. The door was half open and Paul was lying across the bed. Just as you see him now. It is the curse of the room. It is the nonsense. No nonsense. Please say my master possessed my evil spirit. What that? Sounds like someone riding hard. Coming this oh, way. Yeah. I will go to the door. Right, Holmes, I can't find any sign of a wound on his body. I can't imagine where the blood came from. I very much fear that I can. What do you mean? Holmes. Holmes. Count Romany. My dream, Holmes. My dream. I had it again tonight. Holmes. Holmes. Mr. Holmes. That's the police inspector from Brasnia. A young girl was... Just tell me when you send it. I want to see it. I want to see your drawing. ...led directly here to the castle. It would be nice to see your drawing and be like, oh my gosh. In just a moment we'll find out what is a strange case of Count Romany. Men, when you buy a hair tonic, get your money's worth. Is it for an assignment or an assessment? No other hair tonic keeps the hair more. Because I can I can do either. But Kreml does lots more than keep hair looking handsome. You simply can't beat Kreml to lubricate a dry scalp. Or if you're just like, no, don't stop. Yeah, let's see. Let's go with it. Whip it good. Looking up, I see. Well, one thing, assessment. All right. All right. So the biggest thing is that when you have a character looking up, you, they need to see under the character's chin. That's the biggest thing. It looks good so far. It looks good. It's just that I need I you need to be reminded that when you just your your greatest example is to if you need to take a picture of your own when you're you're looking up and you'll see the roundness and how the chin protrudes. It'll be uh it'll be way easier for you and stuff like that. So keep that in mind when you're uh, when you're doing it. So so far it looks good. It just that's the biggest that's the biggest criticism so far. The eyes are something that you're gonna you're gonna slowly learn about. It's gonna take time. The eyes do need work, but that's fine. They're fine for now. Do not worry about them. Worry about the chin for now. We will get to the eyes when we get to them. Like right here. Like look at this eye. Ah, uh, Anton, is the count still asleep? Well, oh, speak up, man. I have been in your shoes before. Hey, She's gone. Gone. And gone. I know what He's you're going to do with the chin. I must have no way for you to lock him up like animals. What shall we do? Where has he gone? Those peasants will be here then in an hour. Holmes? What are you looking for? There's something that should be here on the desk. Something the Count showed us last night. The key to the Roman burial vault. But, but why should he? Why should he take that, Mr. Holmes? Go on, right enough. Bring that lamp, Watson. We may yet be in time to avert the final disaster. Oh, yeah. You gotta look deep inside these eyes. Behind blue eyes. And no one knows what it's like to eat chocolate. Just a bit farther along. Oh, wouldn't it be 
Well, Holmes, let the poor fellow take his own way out. After all, the best we can save him for is a living death in a madhouse. Ah, that's a glimmer of light just ahead. It's the door to the boat. It's a jar. You must have a lamp inside. Let me go first. It's so faint, I can't see much. Look at all those big, bulky shapes. The stone coffins of our ancestors. There's something moving over there in the shadow behind that stone pillar. He's got a knife. He's... Don't go, Robin. Be careful, Holmes. He's mad. Let me go. Let me finish. Oh, I don't want to stop. Drop that knife. No, no. Give me a hand here, Watson. I've got it. I've got it. You're wounded. Oh, it's nothing. Just a scratch from my hand. Why did you have to interfere? Big baby, where are you going? Where are you going, big baby? Take the lamp, Mr. Halosh, and lead the way. I want to get your cousin back up to the castle at once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anton. Sit here, Count Romany. And you, Mr. Halash, over there. Anton, lock that door and remain in case I should need you. Oh, what is the use of prolonging the agony, Mr. Holmes? If you'd let me finish things down there. We haven't much time left, Count Romany. The peasants from the village may be here at any moment. Well, then turn me over to them and let them do what they want. You know we would never do that, Paul. We will protect you no matter what happens. And no matter what you may have done. After all... I'm afraid I must correct you there, Mr. Hannah. Count Romany is and has been fully as responsible for everything he has done as any other sane person. What sort of riddle are you asking us, Holmes? Are you attempting to deny Count Romany's uh, dreams, the episode of the dog, the very old vault, and the horrible death of that girl? I'm not offering a riddle, Watson, but its solution. Your dreams, Count Romany, had one feature which immediately led me to suspect their unnatural origin. You spoke of brilliant colors, of unearthly music, of a distorted sense of space and time. All characteristics of the dreams, or more properly, visions induced by the drug cannabis indica, more commonly known as hashish. And since you showed none of the signs of the habitual drug taker, it was at once obvious to me that your dreams were being induced by someone else. Someone who administered the drug to you in your food or wine on those occasions when they desired you to have one of your hallucinations. But last night... That girl, the blood, the blood stains were the final confirmation, if I needed any, that you had not committed the crime. The real killer slipped badly there. It did not occur to him when smearing the blood upon you and the bedclothes that during a four-mile walk from where that poor girl was killed, the girl, the blood would have dried upon you and not come off upon the bedclothes. Peter Hallash, have you ever seen an execution in this country? Why do you address me? What have I to do with all this? Who but you would inherit the Romany title and estates? No, no! In the early I... hours of dawn, the prisoner is led out, his hands tied behind him, the priest walking in front of the jailers on each side. Mr. Holmes! He is led to this the same wooden enough. block in the center of the prison courtyard, where there stands a giant figure in full evening dress, his hands covered by white gloves, his face masked. It is the execution. Stop it! Then, as the Stop rigid it, man is bent forward on the block, the executioner raises his gleaming axe high into the air, for the final blow. I've had enough. I... Have you ever seen that, Peter Hannah? No, no. I am innocent. I swear it. Do you think a judge will believe you? No. He did not do it. He speaks true, which was I. You shall do nothing to harm him. That's on you. I, this is impossible. I do it for my master and for revenge. But you never take me alive. Open oh, the window. No need to look out of the window. It's a drop of a hundred feet to the courtyard below. Perhaps it was best it ended that way. But, Holmes, I, I, I still don't understand. It's not difficult if you study the facts. Poor Anton. But why did you accuse me, Holmes? Anton's fanatic plot to drive the Count to madness or suicide and to see, see you in his place almost succeeded, Mr. Halash. When his sleeve slipped upward and I saw the cut he'd made on his arm to supply the blood, I knew that he was the girl's murderer. But there was only one way by which I could force the truth from him. And I suspected that his devotion to you was so strong that only an accusation against you would unseal his lips. A hatred that Anton must have nursed since childhood. I knew that my father had wronged his family, but... Well, I, I thought that was all dead and buried history. Not to a fanatical Carpathian peasant, Count Romany. <sighs> Mr. Holmes, you've given me back my life, my sanity. But my Your sanity, Count Romany. But my I what you first told me about the story of your dream. I do hope you don't know yourself. I can ever if um, you and your cousin will introduce Watson and myself to some of your famous local fishing, I'll consider it thanks enough. 
And that uh, reminds me, Watson. No, Would you mind taking down the telegram for me? Oh, this well. cut uh, momentarily precludes the use of my right hand. That's how I do. They had a natural. They have a natural thing to them. Wilkinson, Entwistle, and Dodd. Yes? Oh, I was just wondering if you were okay. Three vampires. Uh, no, no, no. You're fine. You're 100% fine. Um. No, 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 no. Trusting to be favored by you with any further such commissions that may arise, I remain your obedient servant, Sherlock Holmes. But you're getting so good at art. You're getting so good at art. I, I want to let you know that you're you're getting so good at art and so quickly. I believe in you. Thank you, Joe. Well, that was quite a send-off. You're trying out new things. You're you're not sticking to. To just one thing, you know, you're doing it. Powers girls appear on magazine covers, they star in exclusive fashion shows, and very appropriately are called long-stemmed American beauties. So tonight I'd like you to meet Miss so Maria Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mmm, that's a very attractive spring hat you're wearing, Maria. Just like it? Wanna call yes, it very much. But how about removing you can get back so to your art. I just want locks. you to know. Why, of course. I believe I'd in you. Certainly looks like a million dollars. Well, also, Thanks to you, Mr. Powers. They would do. To me. Yes. The first advice you gave me when I became a Powers model was to always wash my hair with Cremel shampoo. What was I doing right here? And I must say, doing? never in my mm -hmm. life have I used any shampoo mm -hmm. that left my mm -hmm. hair more radiant. Yes, I'm completely mm -hmm. sold on Cremel shampoo. You see, Cremel shampoo has been especially mm -hmm. developed mm -hmm. to glamour bathe each tiny strand of hair. To reveal all its what natural brilliant luster. And don't forget to mention the built-in oil base. Yeah, I have that. That's what helps keep the hair right. from becoming dry and brittle. What is that going to do here? The girls tell me that after Cremel shampoo, uh, oh, right. their hair holds a wave and curl That's much right. better. I know what I was going to do. Not only to the Powers girls, I'm but to every sorry. woman. I knew. To bring out the I figured it out. In her hair. No, don't you worry, Lad. I, I, I remember. And many thanks to your beautiful model. And now, Dr. Watson, what about next week? Well, now, next week, mm. I think I should tell you about the strange death of a young Sussex schoolmaster. Yeah. Now, one of the most bizarre and most terrifying mysteries Goodness. we ever encountered. I call it The Adventure of the Lion's Mane. I love those emails, guys. The Zemos are a post my goats adored. So, those Zemos are very adored. The was suggested by an incident in Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's story, The Sussex Vampire. Nigel Bruce appeared by permission of California Pictures. Tom Conway through the courtesy of Eagle Lion Pictures. Yeah. The Sherlock Holmes series is produced by Tom Conway. Got these panels that I'm doing as well. That's what this was for. Grab these panels. Hold up. Tell us about the adventure of the lion's mane. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. Jesus. <laughs> Turn this into. Turn this into Cremel Hair Tonic and Cremel Shampoo present the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes, starring Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson and Tom Conway as Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> well, yeah, there we go. Mass love. <laughs> you go again, Mr. Bell. Flattering me again. If only Sherlock Holmes were here to make the picture complete. No, Mr. Bell, you know that's impossible. He retired to Sussex years ago and took up bee farming. I suppose you visited him there. Naturally. As a matter of fact, I remember one Saturday towards the end of July, 1907, that Is we... Is this the beginning of the story, Dr. Watson? Surprised, But hadn't you better 
Have your word with our listeners first? Yes, Dr. Watson, I have. Men, I'm sure you'll be interested to learn that a recent survey showed that Kreml hair tonic is preferred among America's top flight executives and most successful men. Sorry, Matt, why shouldn't it be? I literally was like... Oh, yeah, image, I had something else I was doing, right? This is why Kreml gives a man's hair such a natural, well-groomed look. Such a handsome, clean-cut appearance. Kreml always keeps the hair neatly in place longer with an attractive, healthy-looking luster. Yet it never leaves your hair looking or feeling greasy, sticky, or dirty. After you apply Kreml, you can rub your hand over your hair and your hair always feels so delightfully clean. Notice, too, how no greasy film comes off on your hand or hat band. Just use a little Kreml on your hair in the morning, and at night your hair looks as neatly groomed as when you first combed it in the morning. Remember, no other hair Oh, sorry. Sorry. K-R-E-M-L. Kreml hair tonic. Now, Dr. Watson, I'm all ears. Well, I was paying Holmes one of my frequent visits. His cottage is situated on the southern... Oh, no. Matt's a lot of... I would, I'm sorry that I literally was like, I'm work... I'm gonna work on your stuff, and uh, I'm gonna draw in your stuff, and then I'm like, all right, I also want to work on my panels, and... <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. Half a mile away is Holmes's only neighbor. And who is hmm. that? Harold Stackhurst, who's the headmaster of the well known preparatory school, the Gables. Private school, I suppose you'd call it. It was summer, and most of the boys were away on holiday, except a few who were catching up. No, I'm not going to prioritize you last. I'm literally, I just want to make, I, I, it, it's been on my mind, and I just want it out off my mind. I will be back to it. I will come back to it eventually. But I wanted it off my brain. No, they're not. Not more important than my friends? No. Oh yeah, Dazed Eyes had probably had a had a hiccup. Oh, yeah. You are my friend, and you will get prioritization. You will, you will see. You will see nothing but prioritization. I will prioritize you. I will prioritize uh, Inquisitor Price, Big Battle Barracks himself. Yes. But I wanted to. I wanted to get this. I'm sorry. <laughs> And also, I'm gonna give her a short skirt. I like short skirts because you want. I want to see your thighs. So this would be the YouTube channel panel. YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, I got. I'm gonna work on your stuff. Don't worry. Save Panels. It's panels. <laughs> nope, not caps lock. Panels. Yeah. My brain just needed to get this off my foot. Off. Just like, come on. And then bear. Bear down here because she has a bear. She's gonna have a bear. Uh, I need to look up an image of a bear because my brain is having a big derp, but it's, it's got like that. 
Hurry, Watson, run. I say, he, he, he's fainted. No, 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 he's, he's trying to get up again. Uh, uh, he's writhing on the ground. Danger floofs. Danger floofs. And that is my idea for right now. And then I got... Uh, huh? What is bear? Uh, the thing that, uh, that makes me just like my necromancer, just, uh, insane. We should play more. By the way. We should play more... We've got so much. We have so many fucking games to play. Don't don't even worry about it. By the way, are you streaming tonight, Big Metal? He's not wounded. You can stream. Yeah, I have a YouTube channel. It's uh, it's just where I dump all my art stuff. But yeah, I got a YouTube channel. I have the YouTubes. Uh, it's the same as my name. Some wild beast in this part of England. Hold up. It's unthinkable. Quite. Besides, the claws of an animal would have dug deeper. These welts are inflamed, and there are little red spots at the ends. No. It looks as if someone has used a lash on him. A thin iron scourge with knots, poisoned knots. Who could it have been? Uh. No one along the edge of the cliff. I can see for miles on the beach. All right. If you're not gonna stream, you're not gonna stream. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm gonna be sad. You're not streaming. I'm giving myself enough space to make these panels, cause I wanna, I wanna have fun with it. You're, you heard a mess, a lot of, you heard it from the big man himself. No stream. There is no stream. Is there anything I can do? Yes. Yes. Go back to the house. Send for the police and keep the boys indoors. I don't want them mixed up in this. Of course. Did I? I can't believe it. Stankhurst, you stay here with the body. Watson and I will go down to the beach to see what we can find. Good. But don't be any longer than you can help. Come along, Watson. Here's the path leading down the face of the cliff. There is no need. There is no Neo. <laughs> He's starting to believe. <laughs> He's starting to believe. <laughs> oh, Kevon's live. Oh, that's so cool. He's starting to believe. That means no one else has been to the beach by this path since the storm. Here's the mark of his hand where it fell. Dimension 20. Oh, D20. Oh, yeah. Dimension 20? I've never... Are we talking about the same person? Probably not. D20 Thoughts is, uh, is... Is someone else. Look, Holmes, there are some distant figures up there on the beach. Too far away. Besides, this lagoon lay between them and the person. Perhaps the fishing boat, perhaps, but I can see no sign of a boat having been beached along the shore. Yes, then uh, who, uh, how... Uh, Quite. Could it be Stackhurst? On oh, Fantasy High. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Dimension 20 is a show on TV. I don't know that. I didn't know that. Also, she is a chunky lady. She is my necromancer, and she is a chunky necromancer. Besides, I've just thought of something. Yes. You asked if anyone had a grudge against McPherson, and I, I thought I ought to tell you. Go on. Well, about a year ago, this chap Murdoch was rather fond of a girl down in the village, but McPherson cut him out. She's a bit of a chunky lady. She's kind of a chunky lady. Chunky. She's a chunky lizard lady. Chunky. McPherson's dog got excited. He went for Murdoch, and Murdoch went into one of his rages and threw the animal out of the window. 
I don't know what kind of outfit she's going to wear. I could put her in heavy armor, but also... I could not put her in heavy armor, so I don't know. My brain is being real stupid. I don't know why. Yeah. So she's gonna have a bunch of skelly mans around her, and this is gonna be the Discord, cause her color scheme is green. So she has the Discord on her. Also, Mass Atlanta. Uh, I have no idea what a uh, fantasy high is, so um, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not as cool as you. I'm sorry. If only I was as cool as you. Yeah. The joy of destroying someone with a natural 20. Oh, yeah. Daughter up in any of your dirty business. 
I thought you might want to help us solve the murder. Ah, uh, you did, did you? Well, I'll have you know, I consider Mr. McPherson's attentions to my maud was insulting. And my son, William, is of the same mind. Letters and meetings, but never a word of marriage. I'll not have you breaking her out. I'll not have her name dragged through the... That's all right, Father. I know that Fitzroy is dead. I want to help find his murderer. I'll not have you mix This is my business, Father. Let me manage it in my own way. I'll do anything you say, Mr. Holmes, to help bring them to justice. Why do you say them? Mr. McPherson was not a weakling. He was brave and strong. No single person could have inflicted such an outrage on him. Uh, one thing more. We found this note in the dead man's pocket. Can you throw any light on it? Did he go down to the beach expecting to meet you? No. I sent it. It's true. But we were to meet tonight. I see no reason for mystery. We were engaged to be married. We only kept it secret because... Fitz didn't want to be ragged by the boys at the school. Here is my engagement ring. Well, you might have told me. I would, if you had shown a little more sympathy, Father. But the note, it didn't come by post. Who was your go-between? I'd rather not answer that question. It really has nothing to do with the matter. Do you realize that this go-between was the only person who knew of your meetings with young McPherson? Had he any reason to resent him? That's no business of yours. You had many... Ah! Was Ian Murdoch one of them? There was a time when I thought he was. But all so the defenders of Mordor. Oh, okay. Cared for each other. Miss Bellamy, do you think it natural that a hot-tempered young fellow like Murdoch... The defenders of the, the gates of Mordor. If you think Ian Murdoch had anything to do with a murder, you're wrong. A finer man never drew the breath of life. He wanted us to be happy. It wasn't the kind to think of himself first. He'd gotten over his feelings for me. Then why did he want to be the first to tell you the news of your fiancé's death? Because he was Fitzroy's friend. He thought it was his duty. He thought he... What does it matter? Fitz is dead. Why don't you find his murderer? What's the good of all this? Mm. Thank you for your information, Miss Bellamy. Leave me alone, can't you? Leave me alone! Go and find the murderer if you're so clever. Perhaps we shall. Well, good day. Hmm. Looks like another black wall to me, Holmes. Huh? Perhaps. But even that is enlightening. There are only so many possibilities, Watson. We may finally arrive at the correct Ooh. solution by... Escape from blood keep. <laughs> Good, good. I must say, Holmes, for a detective on a case, you seem extraordinary like a school. You spent the better part of the last three days up in your garret among your books. I've been looking for the solution, something I once read it back of my mind, but I can't seem to bring it into the light of my consciousness. Yes, and in the meantime, this murder yeah. will through our fingers. Once he leaves the school, we'll never be able to get our hands on him again. I wonder that he has, hasn't left before this. Oh, how can you sit there so calmly and say that, Holmes? You're losing your grip. Perhaps I am, perhaps I am. I, if I could only find the fact that I'm looking for. It began with a C. I'll swear it began with a C. Well, then, how about the old encyclopedia there? Look up all the C's in the book. But I'm not sure it is C. Oh, you're being exasperating and exaggerating. You know that the murderer didn't escape along the beach or even climbed the top of a cliff. But did it ever occur to you that it, it might see be, be somebody hiding in one of those caves? Some sadistic maniac? Yes, it did occur to me. But it's not possible. I searched every one of those caves and there's no trace of human habitation in any of them. Oh, and my theory of sadistic maniacs all wrong? Yes. Huh? And horrible as that theory sounds, I'm convinced that the truth is even more horrible. That death came from the sea. And the truth is more ghastly than anything you can imagine. Oh, you make the chills run down my spine. I must say, I shall never have the courage to go swimming down there again. And a wise thing, too. At least for some time. I must say, I don't see how young Murdoch has the nerve. Murdoch? Murdoch went swimming down on that beach? When? A quarter of an hour ago, I saw him go by with a towel over his arm. Why didn't you tell me? Come on, we must bring him back. 
poor boy has the chance. Oh, good heavens, Holmes, I, I had no idea. Look, something's happened. Someone's coming up the path. Stackers, he's carrying someone on his back. By thunder, it's Murdoch, and he's in bathing trunk. Oh, Holmes, Watson, something's happened to Murdoch. What is it? It's the same thing that killed young McPherson. I made him, I made him staggering up the face of the cliff. It was too far gone for me to get him home, so I, I brought him here. Put him on the couch. Uh, have a look at him. Oh. Oh. He's giving out. Oh. Hardly breathe. Oh. His face is turning quite black. Here, quick, Holmes. Uh. Pour me out a glass of that brandy over there. Right. Uh, hold his head while I, I try to get it down. Perhaps uh, 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 if he can only swallow. Uh, 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 some more. Take the bottle. You can't give him too much. His, his color is coming back. He's, he's beginning to breathe again. All right. His heart's getting stronger. It, look, it, he's trying to talk. It lashed me in the water. It lashed me. Now I remember. In the water, of course. You want to rant? It's terrible. Pirates of dark water. Okay. Give me something. All right. Uh, I guess... Pirates of Dark Water. I'm not sure that I actually know anything about Dark Waters, but or pirates of those kind. But how could they be the pirates of Dark Water if there is no Dark Water? What is the Dark Water? Who knows? How could they even say it's Dark Water if they don't even know what Dark Water is? Are they really pirates or are they just saying they are? How could they? Uh, I'm not even in inclined to believe that they are pirates. I'll give them a 2 out of 5, if that's the case. 2 out of 5 for the piracy. My goodness. Is that, is that even a... What is that? Is that a dark... I don't even know what, the, what, where that, what property that is. I don't even know who owns that property right now. Is that, is that Captain Jack Sparrow? Is he even, uh, are they even talking about Blackwater or Jack, Captain Jack? That's all I know about it. Who even understands what's going on with the, uh, with Captain Jack Black? And his dark waters. Barbara, uh, I'm not sure who uh, Barbados is. Is it is it Barbados? Barbara, son. Bro it's the one with the dude with the broken knife. That doesn't help me. I'm very confused and concerned. I mean, I can rant about it. I, I don't know dick about it, but I I can't remember it at all. I can't recall it. Pirates of Barbados. Uh, yes. Are they really pirates? Am I a pirate? Are we... Uh, is anybody really a pirate? If you really think about it, and you go down to it, uh... Are, are we even really pirates? Are we even thinking about being pirates? Ugh. What is piracy, and how can we how can we effectively fight against it? As the Queen says, there is, you cannot fight against uh, piracy, as it is already too deep. You can only cut it out with a knife. So I'm not sure. Hopefully that rand is good enough. Sufficient enough to be stupid enough. I'm just a waffle. Oh my goodness! Okay, alright. I got a Wikipedia of Pirates of Dark Water. Alright. Pirates of Dark Water is an American fantasy animated television series produced by Hanna Barbera. Okay. 
All right, hold up. I guess I I gotta look at a picture. Pirates of dark water. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, I don't know jack shit about this series. So um, you know, there's people. They're pirates, and they're crazy. Crazy for being even out there. It's crazy time. The free online encyclopedia that no that no will ever edit again. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm glad I sent that that uh, your way. That's fucking as a meme of the century. It seems. Oh my goodness. Uh, Masaletov. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, Dr. Watson will be back. Does she look, uh, sufficiently good enough for you? Here's a sensational beauty tip direct from Hollywood. Does she go look good? Does she meet your standards over here? the night before. Give your hair a glamour bath with cremel shampoo. I certainly agree with that, Mr. Bell. And you know, Hopefully she does. Cremel shampoo is the shampoo used by those famous beauties, the Farrah's model. Cremel shampoo has been especially developed Bam. to glamour bathe each tiny strand of hair so that it fairly radiates natural dazzling highlights. It leaves the hair I mean, you can not believe it as much as possible, but it, uh, I've never seen it, so I don't know what to tell you. Except I haven't seen it, and that's life. It's not a drying detergent. It's entirely different. Yes, cremel shampoo uncovers all the natural highlights that lie concealed in every woman's hair. Yet it never dries the hair. In fact, cremel shampoo has a built-in oil base which helps keep the hair from becoming dry or brittle. Cremel shampoo whips up a luxuriant active foam, even in the hardest water. It rinses out so easily and never leaves any dull, soapy film. So, ladies, why not buy a bottle of cremel shampoo at any drug counter and glamour bathe your hair to tantalizing loveliness? K-R-E-M-L, Kreml Shampoo. Now, Dr. Watson, what about next week? Well, next week, I think I'll tell you our homes... If you're lonely, buddy, you want me to hang out with you? I can hang out with you. We can hang out together. I call it the adventure of the island of death. Tonight's adventure was adapted from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's story, The Lion's Maid. Nigel Bruce appeared by permission of California Pictures. Tom yeah, Matt Salatov's here. The Sherlock Holmes series is produced... Not like that. <laughs> not like... That's not what I meant. This is Joseph Bell speaking for Cremel Hair Tonic and Cremel Shampoo. Not what I meant. ...inviting you to be with us next week at the same time, regardless of whether you change to daylight saving time. When Dr. Watson will tell us about the adventure of the island of death. This is Tom Conway. Your health is vital in the drive on cancer, the disease that must be stopped. Help save future lives. Give to the cancer drive. ABC, the American Broadcasting. Cremel Hair Tonic and Cremel Shampoo present the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes, starring Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson and Tom Conway as Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Once again, it's Monday night, and time to call on our good friend and host, Dr. Watson. I'm sure he's waiting for us in his study, so let's join him, shall we? Good evening, Dr. Watson. Ah, uh, there you are, Mr. Bell. I was just having a glass of extremely mellow port. But you can join me. Thank you, Dr. Watson. You're always the perfect host, just as you are the perfect storyteller. Oh, you flatter me, my boy. Though I must confess that the ingredients which make up tonight's new Sherlock Holmes adventure are so strangely assorted that even an old gentleman like myself can hardly fail to make it an exciting yarn. And just what are the ingredients in tonight's story, Dr. Watson? Well, let me see. 
Take an almost deserted island set deep in a Scottish lock. Sprinkle it generously with the following assorted selections of humanity. One measure of evil scientists. A faint wisp of human skeletons. A considerable pinch of a fat lady, a handful of professional contortionists, and a dash of midget. Agitate these ingredients well, then add to the mixture a detective by the name of Sherlock Holmes and a certain doctor by the name of Watson. <laughs> Season generously with fear, danger, and sudden death. You have the recipe for the story I call The Island of Death. Dr. Watson, you're, you're beginning to make the hackles rise in the back of my neck. Indeed, then, since hackle means hair, I think perhaps you'd better have your word with our listeners before I begin my story. Yes, I will. Men, if you want to be a success in life, if you want to look like a success in life, remember that well-groomed hair means a lot to a man's appearance. I've heard so many men complain lately that the hairdressing they use is too greasy or too highly perfumed, that it leaves a sticky and flaky residue on the hair. That's why I urge you to try Kreml hair tonic. This highly specialized hair tonic has just enough light oil to keep hair handsomely groomed, every hair in place, with a rich, healthy-looking luster. And it gives hair such a natural, well-groomed appearance. Yet Kreml never leaves hair looking or feeling greasy or sticky. This is because Kreml contains a special combination of hair grooming ingredients which is found in no other hair tonic. After you apply Kreml, just run your hand over your hair. Notice how delightfully clean your hair feels. So tempting for the ladies to touch. Notice how no greasy film comes off on your hand or hat band. Kreml always gives hair such a handsome, clean-cut look, as if you just combed it, and it keeps it that way all day long. K-R-E-M-L, Kreml hair tonic. And now, Dr. Watson, how about the new Sherlock Holmes story, The Island of Death? Well, Mr. Bell, as I told you, most of that exciting adventure took place on a tiny island in the Scottish Lake District. However, it began innocuously enough, as so many of our adventures began, in our rooms at Baker Street. It was on a stormy September evening, and Holmes and I were seated on either side of our fireplace. I remember after dinner that he began to analyze the old cliché that truth is indeed stranger than fiction. I can almost hear him now as he said, My dear Watson, the true picture of the criminal world is stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. Oh, I'm not sure that I agree with you, Holmes. Police reports and the papers are usually quite undistinguished and dull. True, old chap, but that's the fault of the reporters. Depend upon it, Watson, there's nothing so unnatural as the commonplace. Oh, let's put it to a practical test. I pick up the evening paper, and uh, here is the first heading upon which I come. I, I, hope, I hope you like this, lad. Of half a column of print, and I bet you that without reading it, I can tell you the gist of the trouble. I accept your bet, Watson. Give me your deduction. Oh, it's not very hard. There is, of course, the other woman. The extra drink, the push, the blow, the bruise, and the sympathetic sister, all that lady. The crudest of writers could invent nothing. Yeah. Your example is an unfortunate one for your argument. So nice. The so nice. The to which you refer is the Dundas separation case. Mm -hmm. The husband was a teetotaler. There was no other woman, and the conduct complained of was that he had drifted into the unfortunate habit of winding up every meal by taking out his false teeth and hurling them at his wife. An action which I think you will agree is uh, not likely to occur to the imagination of the average storyteller. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Quite. Yeah. You expecting a visitor? Yes, Watson, I am. And he might well prove a client who will point out the moral of our little discussion. Oh, what makes you say that? The gentleman calling on me is a distinctly colorful personality by the name of Stephen Singer. He's nearly seven feet tall, and yet he weighs under eight stone. A card from him this morning informed me of his intention of calling here at seven o'clock tonight. You said that he weighs under eight stone. That's only 130 pounds. He must be a human skeleton. That was the unfortunate title applied to him at the circus sideshow at which I first met him. It's got circus freaks here in Baker Street. Oh, I'll have seen everything. Freak is an unkind and inappropriate word, Watson. Stephen Singer is a fellow human being and a more than usually unusually worthy one. In the case of the Bagshot Circus murders, he was good enough to take advantage of his... Uh, almost unique physical proportions, and obliged me by hiding in the barrel of a circus cannon. His evidence was instrumental in sending a diabolical murderer to the gallows. Uh, let him in, will you, Watson? Yeah, of course. Good evening, Mr. Singer. Come along in, won't you? That's all right. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. It's yes. good to see you again, Stephen. Hello, Mr. Holmes. 
don't want to make a nuisance of myself, but I did have a little problem, and I thought perhaps you'd help me with it. Of course, Stephen. Sit down, won't you? By the way, this is my colleague, Dr. Watson. How do you do, Doctor? How do you do, Mr. Singer? My friend was just telling me that you once held him, helped him in a, in a murder case. Oh, that. To add nothing. Just slipped myself into the cannon barrel and heard one or two things I wasn't meant to. <laughs> Nevertheless, your help was invaluable, Stephen. I shall be only too happy to do what I can to repay the favor. What's your problem? Well, uh, perhaps I'm imagining things and perhaps I'm not. But wouldn't you say it was a rum thing if a professor offered me and three of my pals from the circus 50 quid apiece to go to some island in Scotland for a week? Yes, indeed. I should say that that's extremely odd. Can you give me a few more facts? Well, Mr. Holmes, this professor come to the circus three nights ago when we was playing at Stafford at a bow. <laughs> what was his name? A professor McElroy. Funny-looking coat with a bushy red beard he was. Indeed. I've heard of the gentleman. I understand that he is something of a rebel in the medical profession. He returned from Vienna recently, where he's been studying under Dr. Freud. Dr. Freud? Never heard of him. You will, Watson, you will. Mm -hmm. He devotes himself to the psychological aspects of the human body. Pray continue with your story, Stephen. Well, Mr. Holmes, he approached me and three of me pals. And uh, who are those uh, pals? Well, there was Bill Carew, the major we call him. He's a midget. And there was Belle Brackett, the fat lady. And the third was a bloke who joined the circus two days ago. Jeff Wallen is his name. I haven't seen his act, but he builds himself as the injured rubber man. Uh, professor promised us 50 quid apiece, our tickets on the Scotch Express tomorrow morning, and told us he'd have a boat waiting to ferry us out to his island when we got there. Holmes, there's something devilish going on here. A professor who studies psychology wants four people to go to a lonely island. A midget, a contortionist, a fat lady, and the fourth bull. Oh, that's all right. I'm used to it, Doctor. The force of human skeleton. Oh, well, sure, that's what you were going to say. Oh, well, now, we all agreed to go up there. Uh, we didn't like the bloke, but none of us can turn down 50 quid. Mm, but we got to talking after he'd gone. Supposing he's up to doing us a bit of no good. And anyway, he made us sign that paper. Paper? What paper? I don't remember it too well, Mr. Holmes, but it did say that if anything was to happen to us, the professor wasn't responsible. That's what started us to talking and worrying after he'd gone. And that's why I've come to you. I'm glad that you did, Stephen. Did you inform your friends of your decision to come to see me? See me? Uh, no, Mr. Holmes, I didn't. I might have done it if I'd have been sure you wouldn't have laughed at me. I'm convinced that this is no laughing matter, Stephen. Unless I'm much mistaken, there's devil's work afoot. And then you'll come up there with us, Mr. Holmes? Yes. Tomorrow morning, Dr. Watson and I will meet you in Scotland. Well, the lake looks extremely choppy, Holmes. Boat's quite small, I hope. I'm a wretched sailor, you know. I'm sure it'll be a smooth trip, Watson. Well, I certainly hope so. Hello. Here comes Singer with the other three. Great Scott. What strange-looking traveling companion. Well, since they traveled on an earlier train, I think it's time to have Stephen in. Thank you. Hello, Stephen. Thank uh, you. I'd like you to meet some pals of mine. Uh, Dr. Watson, Mr. Holmes, this is Miss Bell Brackett. Ah! Uh, careful, Bell Watcher, step on the gangplank. Well, dearie. Got to be a strong plank to hold me up. How are you, Mr. Holmes? Dr. Watson. How do you do? How do, you do? Thank you. This is Bert Olney. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson. How do you do, sir? Don't know what you do on the bill, Governor. But I can kick the back of my head with both feet at once. Oh, really? Very useful, I should imagine. Finding <laughs> you standing up. What's your act, gentlemen? Act? Well, we haven't exactly got an act. Just regard us as friends of Stevens. It's on the radio box, good friend. Uh, it's Sherlock Holmes, done by the American Broadcast, uh, ABC. Very old American Broadcast. Well, we're all aboard, Mr. Holmes. My 
Might as well get going, I suppose. Why not, Stephen? All right, Captain. We're all here. You may as well get started. Dr. Watson. Uh, yes, Mr. Alden? Do me a favor, will you? Give us a scratch between the shoulder blades. Give you a what? A scratch between the shoulder blades. Oh, that's, oh. that's it. As soon as we crossed the border, these Scots police started to bite on me. Thank you kindly. Starlit night, Watson, and the spanking breeze. I wonder what adventure lies in store for us. I have a feeling that Professor Mac McElrath may not be too glad to see us. Why did you come here, Holmes? I know who you are and what you do. Why are you so All interested right. in my obscure experiments? For two reasons, Professor McElrath. I'm looking at a rose tutorial. Fuck me, looking at a rose tutorial. Oh yeah, rose tutorial. Yeah. I'm speaking from there now. I thought 
it might be you, Dr. Watts. But if it doesn't, I'm afraid... And well, you might be, if only of your own conscience. I'm afraid of them. The freaks. They're so angry. They might will... I'd hardly blame them. If you're frightened for your safety, the best thing to do is to let us all leave here at once. Are you sure it's impossible to summon the boat before five days are gone? Well, no, I did lie about that. I could give a signal in the morning by hoisting a flag on the watchtower. Just a moment. That was a stone dust against my window. I'll be back, Holmes. Don't hang up. Sounds distinct as a Yes, yeah, so pretty. Says there's someone lurking outside his window. Holmes, are you still there? Yes, Professor. What's wrong? That figure just standing in the shadows. I can see it from where I'm talking. I can't see the face, but it's... Holmes, it's raising its arm. It's got it. Oh. I'm afraid it's murder, Watson. Quick, we must get over to the big house as fast as we can. So pretty. Just a moment, we'll find out just what happened to Professor McElroy. Every man who takes pride in his appearance should know that handsome, healthy-looking hair needs a height. There's so many people hair. online right and now. When you buy a hair tonic, be sure to get so nice. Be so sure nice. So nice. the extra advantages of Cremel hair tonic. This highly Ooh, specialized hair tonic important. contains Whoa. an amazing combination Whoa. of hair grooming and Whoa. which is found in no other hair tonic. Cremel keeps dry, stubborn hair neatly in place all day. And it always gives hair such a natural, well-groomed appearance. Never sticky or greasy. But men, Kreml does lots more than keep hair looking handsome. Kreml leaves your scalp feeling so alive. At the same time, it removes dandruff flakes. And it's simply great to lubricate a dry scalp. And if you, like so many men, have hair so dry it breaks off and falls when you comb it, Kreml actually helps condition the hair in that it makes it feel softer and more pliable. So men, buy a bottle of Kreml at any drug counter. Ask for an application at your barber shop. Let Kreml help keep your scalp hygienic. Your hair always looking its very best. K R E M L. Kreml hair tonic. Kreml. Well, Dr. Watson, when you got over to the big house, Kreml. Professor McElrath was dead. Guys, yes, it's Kreml. The examination of his crumpled body told me that he was beyond mortal aid. Holmes lost no time in examining that room. This crime isn't very hard to reconstruct, Watson. The dead man was standing here as he spoke his last words to me on this telephone. Yes, and the window is beside the instrument. The glass in one pane is shattered. Yes, at a height of approximately five feet. Now, the professor was shot in the temple. He was about six feet tall. The line from his wound through the broken pane would indicate that the killer stood out there in the rose garden. Watch up, Mr. Holmes. Yes, we heard a shot. Anyone get a theory? Yes, I'm afraid they did. Professor McElrath just been murdered. Murdered? Well, can't say I'm sorry. Perhaps not, Major. But the fact remains that his killer must be brought to justice. By the way, only three of you are here. Yes, where's Bert Alner, the cantonist? Oh, yeah. I don't know. He went straight to his cottage when we got back from the big house. That's the last I saw of him. You know, it's a funny thing. I was only half awake, Mr. Holmes, but I thought I heard two shots. About five minutes apart. Two shots? And Bert Olney has not appeared. We must go over to his cottage at once. Oh. Oh, poor Bert. Is he yet bad, Dr. Watson? No, a flesh wound in the back. He was lucky. Curious. Observe the revolver lying on the floor beside him. The same caliber as the one used to kill the professor. Ah, see what Bert's done, Mr. Holmes. He killed the professor to save us all. That's right, Stephen. And then he tried to kill himself because he knew you'd catch him, Mr. Holmes. That's the way it must have been. Oh, he was a brave man. An interesting theory. Yes, but only a theory. Look at the position. Yeah. I'll stake my medical reputation. Oh, yeah. self inflicted. Holmes, oh, this has been an attempt at another murder. <laughs> More coffee, Watson? No, thank you. I've drunk a blasted gallon and I'm still sleepy. And I've smoked almost the entire <sighs> supply of tobacco I brought on this trip, and I'm still very wide awake. I asked questions until well after midnight. And what did I learn? The servants all alibi each other. Precisely. 
and that of our party of four, no one is able to provide an alibi for the other. So that it must be one of them as ill-assorted a group of suspects as we ever met. Remember, yes. it's an object. A strange business. Why the attack on Olney? The professor, yes, that's quite understandable. But why Olney? What singled him out from the others? Oh, I don't know. He's a contortionist. He's perfectly normal looking. He, he doesn't seem like a freak. Of course. That's it. Thank you, Watson. You've given me the other end of the thread. Oh, have I? Round up the others and bring them to the haunted tower. Dawn is beginning to break, but before we hang that signal for rescue, I shall find the answer to this bizarre problem. Blam. Blammo. Before we fix this signal flag, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to warn you that as soon as we reach land, I shall turn Professor McElwraith's murderer over to the authorities. Let it go, Mr. Holmes. Whoever it was did us all a good turn. Let's forget it. I'm afraid that murder is not a matter to be forgotten, Major. But surely you haven't forgotten the attempt on your own life, Mr. Alner. I feel nearly as good as new, Governor. I think the Major's right. Let's forget it. No, Mr. Alney. Not even on your request. Because the whole case centers around you. Who? Me? Last night, while the murderer was standing outside his window, the professor telephoned me. He wanted to know if both Dr. Watson and I were in our cottage. The implication is obvious. You mean that the mysterious figure he'd seen resembled us in Bill? Precisely, Watson. Now, Mr. Singer's nearly seven feet tall. You, Miss Brackett, if you'll forgive me, could hardly be mistaken for us. You said it, dear. Oh, no, because the Major, he told us that he's only four foot three. It must have been you, Mr. Holner. But I got shot, too. And you said when you examined me that it was impossible. I could have done it. Medically impossible for a normal man, but I've forgotten your profession. You're a contortionist. You could easily have shot yourself at, at, at such an angle. What do you have to say, Mr. Olney? That I, uh... Why not admit the truth? You're not a contortionist, are you? No, Mr. Holmes, I'm not. You see, my, my twin brother got the bid for this here job, but he had another engagement. And since the professor was so particular about the date, my brother told me to come here and we'd split the fee. But how did you know that he wasn't a contortionist, Holmes? You should remember, Watson. Huh? When we first saw him on the boat, he complained of the Scottish fleas and asked you to scratch between his shoulders. Oh, he did, yes. A real contortionist would not, not have needed your assistance. So your medical verdict still holds good, Watson. Arnie could not have shot himself. But you've ruled the rest of us out, Mr. Holmes. Not quite, Stephen. The simplest answer is that the mysterious figure that the professor described was disguised. Disguised? That theory would be confirmed by the fact that the killer, when he was in the garden, saw the professor standing at the telephone and deliberately attracted his attention by throwing a pebble at the window. Look here, Mr. Holmes, the sun's well up. I'm tired of all this theory. Very well, Major. But, Mr. Holmes, uh. don't keep us on edge like this. Yes, dearie, you said someone disguised themselves. Now, who was it? Well, surely the answer is apparent. Not to me, it ain't. Could you, Miss Brackett, have reduced your excessive weight to appear the size of a normal man? No. Nor could you, Stephen, have decreased your excessive height. But the Major could have made himself appear taller with improvised stilts. Then the Major is the only possible gu guilty party. The Major? Well, I mean, it's hard to believe he'd done it. Well, even if he did, I still don't think we ought to turn him in, Mr. Holmes. Oh, no. Remember, he did it for us, dear. Well, he didn't really hurt me when he took that shot at me. But that's just it, only. I might have been tempted if it were only the professor's murder. But he deliberately tried not to murder you, Mr. Olney, but to make it appear that you had killed the professor. But if he's arrested, there'll be a trial, dearie. And if there's a trial, you know how it'll be. They'll make out it was all because he's a freak. It'll be it'll be harder than ever for people to accept us just as, uh, as people. It feels right, Mr. Holmes. It'd be bad for all of us. I think the Major has thought of that possibility. Look at him up there on the tower. He's hoisted the flag. Oh, he, now he's teetering on, on the edge of the parapet. He's going to... Major! Major! Blimey, he jumped. Must be a couple of hundred feet down there. He doesn't have a chance. Oh, the poor Major. He done it for us. Come on, oh, Belle. Oh, I'll take you back to the cottage. I suggest we all return to our quarters and pack. This unhappy tragedy has reached its final conclusion. Making these roses look very pretty. When I came to you in Baker Street, I never dreamed it would end Making up like these this. roses look very pretty. One thing I'd like to say, Mr. Holmes. Yes, Stephen. I now I have to, to be your beat. Not just for solving the case, but because you treated all of us not as freaks, but as ordinary human beings. 
makes a big difference, you know. I know of only one way to treat people, Stephen. And that is as each person deserves to be treated. Well, so we'll get some stretches in there, too. Yeah. Hold up. Uh, that's why I'm beer being. I gotta, I gotta st I gotta get up and go pee, and I'll be right back, guys. Oh yeah. No, she's coming out real good. New Sherlock Holmes adventure was suggested by an incident in Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's story, A Case of Identity. Nigel Bruce appeared through the courtesy of California Pictures. Tom Conway through the permission of Eagle Lion Pictures. The Sherlock Holmes series is produced by Tom McKnight, with original music composed and conducted by Alex Steiner. This is Joseph Bell speaking for Kremel Hair Tonic and Kremel Shampoo, and inviting you to be with us next week at the same time. And Dr. Watson will tell us about the strange adventure of the pointless robbery. America is strong only if her school system is strong. Today it's overcrowded and inadequate. So support your parent teachers association. Do all you can to improve conditions in America's schools. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting. Kremel Hair Tonic and Kremel Shampoo present the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Starring Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson and Tom Conway as Sherlock Holmes. And now for that pleasant moment when we pay our weekly visit to Sherlock Holmes' celebrated friend, the eminent Dr. John H. Watson. Good evening, Mr. Bell. Come in and sit down. Oh, I thought you might have forgotten your date, Dr. Watson, when I saw that your door was closed. <laughs> Not at all, my dear fellow. Rather the opposite. I'm afraid I neglected to keep an eye on the time. I was so deeply engrossed in searching through my files. With satisfactory results, I trust? Well, I hope you will find them, sir. You may remember after I told you the story of the lion's mane the week before last that you asked if Holmes had any other adventures in his beekeeping days. I do indeed, Dr. Watson. Well, I've been running through my notes concerning the remarkable affair of the pointless robbery. And I think you'll find it thrilling enough to keep you... On the edge of your chair. I'm sure we all will, Dr. Watson. But first, men, 
I'm sure you'll be interested to hear why Cremel hair tonic is preferred among America's most prosperous and successful men. Cremel keeps hair handsomely groomed from morning until night, just the way you combed it in the morning. Cremel contains a special combination of hair grooming ingredients which is found in no other hair tonic. This wonderful, natural-looking hairdressing has just enough light oil to keep hair perfectly groomed with an attractive, healthy-looking luster. Yet Cremel never leaves the hair looking or feeling greasy or sticky. Cremel always looks and feels so clean on both hair and scalp. Be sure to try it, men. K-R-E-M-L, Cremel Hair Tonic. Now, Dr. Watson, what's the story of the pointless robbery? Well, it all began, Mr. Bell, on a delightful summer morning in August 1913. I was spending the first day of a week's holiday visiting homes at a small farm on the South Downs to which he'd retired and where he was devoting himself to nothing more serious than the raising of bees. I must say, Holmes, that the quality of breakfast here convinces me that I've discovered the real reason for your devotion to rustic life. A very sound deduction, Watson. And there's much to be said for the peaceful atmosphere of the countryside after the noisy hubbub of London. The peace which I fear may be only too transient, Watson. I suggest that you omit reading the morning paper during uh, your stay. Oh, that talk of war in Europe, you mean nonsense, Holmes. In this year of our Lord, 1913, no civilized nation would dream of resorting to the outmoded palaces of armed force. I trust you're right, Watson. I trust you're right. But, uh... uh I say, Holmes, you, you've got a visitor. Somebody's coming up the path. It's Mr. Kenmore, the rector of our local church. Another donation is indicated, no doubt. It would take the national budget to keep the church's ancient organ in good repair. Be a good fellow, Watson, and open the door while I refill the teapot. Uh, Holmes. Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Good morning, Mr. Kenmore. This is my good friend, Dr. Watson. How do you do, sir? A cup of tea? Uh, no, 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 thank you. No tea. And I must apologize for this unwarranted intrusion at such an early hour. For some pressing matter in connection with the church? Uh, no, Mr. Holmes. The cause of my visit is a most mysterious and disturbing occurrence which took place at my residence last night. Oh, really? I suppose you give me the facts. Uh, no doubt it will seem a minor matter to you, but I feel considerable agitation over it. Briefly... At some time last night, the rectory was broken into by thieves who ransacked the entire house, with the exception of the rooms in which my daughter Alice and I were sleeping. Gracious me. And what was stolen? Uh, nothing. Nothing whatever. Was the thief frightened off? No, Mr. Holmes. We knew nothing of it until Alice came downstairs this morning to prepare my breakfast. She found the house in a state of the utmost confusion, obvious signs of forcible entry, and not a single thing missing. Odd. Very odd. I, I hesitate to ask you, Mr. Holmes, to concern yourself with such a trifle, but you know our worthy constable, Tom Wilson. Yes, an excellent man when it comes to unlighted bicycle lamps, but beyond that... Well, come, Watson, let's accompany Mr. Kenmore to the rectory and see what we can discover. <laughs> told you absolutely nothing seems to be missing. Not that the possessions of a country rector are of such great value. Nevertheless, that silver service on the sideboard would undoubtedly attract any thief's eye. The family inheritance, Mr. Holmes, one of my few values. I see that you've got rather quite a large library, Mr. Kenmore. Any books of great value there? Not at all, Dr. Watson. Sound suggestion, though, Watson. Oh. <laughs> this uh, French window, which gives on to the garden, seems to be where the thief made his entry. Quite. A circle of glass cut out of one of the panes. Then a gloved hand reaching in to turn the key. A gloved hand, Mr. Holmes? Undoubtedly, my dear. The blurred impressions are quite characteristic. And now that you've seen everything, Mr. Holmes, what do you make of it? It presents a most interesting problem, Mr. Kenmore. The disorder of the rooms would indicate a search for some definite object, even though you assure me that you know of nothing of value in your possession. And we must wait for developments. I think you and your daughter should most certainly be on your guard against the thief's return. You really think... Uh, there is... Mr. Kenmore, I... my friend is apt to see criminals behind every bush. The natural result of a, a lifelong career. Oh, perhaps, <laughs> Watson, perhaps. Well, we must be getting along. Uh, I wonder, Mr. Holmes, if you and Dr. Watson would do me a great favor before oh, you go. Of course, if it's in our power. Well, what is it? Would you think me too bold 
If I asked you to let me take a snapshot of you both? Oh, really, Alice. Uh, I gave Alice a camera for her birthday last week, Mr. Holmes, and ever since then she's been making life miserable for everyone. I'm sure you could find two handsomer subjects, my dear. But Watson and I will be glad to have you immortalize our creatures. Yes, of course, naturally. Oh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. I brought my camera down to my room, hoping you'd say yes. Well, I'm really sorry. I was just wearing this old Norfolk jacket. If you stand here, right beside the front door. Uh, well, just a moment. The wind's blowing my hair about a bit. Ah, there we are. <laughs> All right. Just look this way. Fine. Thank you so much. I hope you'll spare me a print or two if they turn up, my dear. I'll be very glad to. As a matter of fact, that was the last picture in the row. Everybody, yeah, we're back. I'll be back. Mr. Watson, that's very kind. Coats yes. back, all right. For your kindness in troubling yourself with my problem. Not at all. And remember, back Mr. Kenmore, back in your guard right. against a return visit. I'm back. I'm back. Looks to me as though you're falling asleep over your book, Watson. Uh, uh, well, I must admit, Holmes, that the combination of country air and that excellent dinner had a very soporific effect on me. Oh, don't apologize. We country dwellers keep early hours. <laughs> Certainly different from the old days in Baker Street. I'm surprised that you don't miss the excitement of the chase, Holmes. Professor Moriarty was the spice who kept the daily routine from becoming monotonous. But apparently he, too, seems to be in retirement. Oh, have you any news of him, Holmes? The last I heard, Scotland Yard had him fairly definitely located in South America. South America, eh? Which would indicate to anyone knowing the professor as well as I do that he may be anywhere on the face of the globe with the exception of South America. <laughs> well, old fella, I'm going upstairs to sleep to sleep. What the devil's that? The church bell. Come on, Watson. There must be something wrong at the rectory. And I thought the quickest way of raising the alarm, Mr. Holmes, was to sound the church bell. Very wise. Uh, tell me, Mr. Kenmore, what was the first thing you heard? A sharp cry from my daughter awakened me, followed by a thud. I rushed into her room and found her. She'll be all right, don't you worry, Mr. Kenmore. I've had to take several stitches, but she a slight concussion for the next few days, but there's no cause for alarm. Oh, thank you, the doctor. When I rushed in and saw her lying on the floor... Her assailant had fled by the time you entered? The open window showed only too clearly the miscreant's path. Well, you keep her in bed for a few days, give her a light diet, and she'll be right as rain. Oh, that face, the window... Oh, she's so conscious, oh. poor girl. To be quite expected after such a blow. No, don't touch me. Please. There, there on the shelf. No, no. The sleeping draft that I gave her will take effect soon. I blame myself, mm. Mr. Holmes, for not having paid more. I hope everybody's having a great night, by the way. It's of no importance now, Mr. Kenmore. Uh, what's that? Uh, someone at the door. Pardon me. Miss, high time you got here. You received my message. Or take your message as it brought me I think she should be carrying just a white flag. What is it, Wilson? She's oh. being like more of like well, peace or something like that, but that's just my opinion. Well, it's Mr. It's, well, it's up to Ladov, but not sure. Dead. Oh. Lying there on the floor with his head crushed in something savage. Deal with it. Horrible. Some prowling thief. No. Oh, no, sir. With the cash box sitting there in plain sight. With four pound and some odd shillings plain to see and not a penny touched. Dilworthy. Wait a moment. The ransacking of this house, the attack on Miss Alice, and now this. There's only one common denominator which applies to all three. I don't understand, Mr. Holmes. That film from Alice's camera, Watson. After we left yeah. the you went to the village. You left it. A white Alice. flag. Being like, she comes in peace. But if you bring, if you bring it, she'll deal it. I'm convinced that roll of film holds the solution of the mysterious events of the past 24 hours. And due to your convenient lapse of memory, we are in possession of the prize. But what prize are we in possession of? That, Watson, remains to be seen. Come, 
We just have time to catch the late train for London. A vis visit to Scotland Yard's laboratory will reveal the precious secret which that film is evidently concealing. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll find out what that precious secret is. Men, when you buy a hair tonic, why not buy one that does lots more than just keep hair looking handsome? Why not get your money's worth and buy Kreml hair tonic? No other hair tonic keeps the hair more neatly groomed and attractive looking. In addition, Kreml is simply great to lubricate a dry scalp. At the same time, it removes itchy, loose dandruff and leaves the scalp feeling so clean, refreshed, and alive. No wonder Kreml is preferred among America's most successful men. Buy a bottle of Kreml at any drug counter. Ask for an application at your barbershop. I don't know, Lada. What cup size? What's her cup size? Hygienic scalp. K R E M L. Kreml hair tonic. Now, Doctor Watson, what did you discover on that precious roll of film, which had already caused the death of one person and a murderous assault upon another? As soon as we reached Scotland Yard's laboratory, Holmes wasted no time in getting permission to develop photographs. Just hand me that second tray, will you, Watson? The one this side of the red lamp. There There. That does it. Look, Watson. The images are starting to appear. Oh, I'll take your word for it. The red lamp gives about as much light as a glowworm. Sorry, but that's all we can use until we finish the development. What, what's up, Lana? What, what's her cup size? It's a, it's a legitimate question. Alright. You let, yeah, hey. You know, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's just one minute. We haven't gone tearing off on a wild goose chase. Impossible, Watson. All the evidence... The Lady the of Freedom. The objective. Ah, now that looks more interesting. Two girls on the beach in bathing suits. I say, Holmes. What? The girl on the left with a fine figure, eh? Undoubtedly. <laughs> but the composition is not improved by those other people in the middle background. I think that... Watson. The Maybe Lady of Freedom. I ah, thought you were displaying a cavalier lack of interest in such a shapely young lady. Paying your intense study. Look, Watson. Look here. Examine it closely through the lens. The bell tolls. It tolls for the thee. Not the girl, you idiot. What? The girl? The two men in the background. Take a good look at that one on the right. Well, there's certainly something familiar about him. Holmes. Holmes, it, it can't be. But it is, Watson. Beyond any shadow of doubt, Professor Moriarty himself and no nearer to South America than the beaches of England. But I, I don't see why Moriarty should have been so anxious to secure this film. After all, Holmes, there's nothing particularly damning in, in a photograph of two men seated on a beach. When one of them is the world's most notorious criminal, and when he's quite ready to commit murder to regain the film. Watson, ask the inspector to call us a car. Where are we going? You and I and this precious film are paying a visit to Sir Edward at the Foreign Office at once. <laughs> Your deduction was absolutely sound, Holmes. You recognize Moriarty's companion then, Sir Edward? Beyond any question. He goes by many names, but our files would indicate that the real one is von Schelling, probably the cleverest among the senior members of the Imperial German Secret Service. Good heavens, a spy. Yes, precisely, Dr. Watson. I should imagine, Sir Edward, that his dealings with Moriarty must be of great importance since they required him to come to England in person. I'm quite sure of it. But the peaceful surroundings of the South Downs and the quiet beaches, what would a spy be doing there? With Portsmouth, England's greatest naval base only a few miles away, and the present situation in Europe, Professor Moriarty does not concern himself with trifles. Under the circumstances... I have no hesitation in telling you two gentlemen that the first trials of our new battle cruisers have been taking place off Portsmouth these last few days. Great Scott. Yes, Doctor. In what we thought 
was the... Now we're going to put some lace. There's still a ray of hope, Sir Edward. Moriarty would not have gone to such lengths to suppress this photograph had his transactions with von Schelling been completed. Do you mean, Holmes, that there may still be time to forestall him? Dr. Watson and I will do whatever is in our power, Sir Edward. <laughs> from the sudden change in your expression after your silence this past hour, you've evidently had an inspiration. We must bait a trap, Watson, and that film must be our bait. Professor Moriarty must be in the fury of his bungling subordinates, who have twice failed to recover it. If I know the professor, he'll make the next attempt himself. But you can't take an advertisement in the newspaper, Holmes, to lure Moriarty into a trap. If Alice and her father will cooperate, I've got a method that is better than any advertisement. Oh? Well, what's that? Evidently, Watson, you're not acquainted with the post office and the postmistress of the average village, to which Fallworth is no exception. She fills the function of a town crier with the utmost efficiency. She will be our advertisement. Save. By the way... Uh... Very well indeed, thank you, Mrs. Roberts. Uh, that's a bliss. Save. And what can I do for you? I'm just yes, saving all my stuff. Steps, I'm not finished I just yet. The young lady will be up and about again soon. We miss her cheery face. You know, Mrs. Roberts, there was an odd thing about that robbery at the rectory. All right. What? I have not finished all with the, the panels. Took was Fuck me. Fancy that. After he struck her down. Not a very valuable bit of loot. Alice is glad she happened to remove the film that very afternoon. It's still on the library desk. Is it really now? I must remember to have it developed. Well, it's a mercy that nothing worse happened. Oh, I almost forgot. Here's your stamps, Mr. Kenmore. I think I can assure you, Mr. Holmes, knowing our worthy postmistress, as I do, that the misinformation I gave her has by now been widely disseminated. Excellent, Mr. Kenmore. And uh, I appreciate what you and Alice have been willing to risk on behalf of your country. At least the falsehood I told was in a worthy cause. I only wish Dr. Watson would let me get out of bed and come downstairs into the library with you when you take up your vigil tonight. I'd like to see that those horrible men get their just desserts. Really, my dear? You sound almost bloodthirsty. Well, I can't say that I blame Miss Ellis for that. If someone had given me a crack on the head, I'd look forward to that downfall. Mr. Kenmore, I would have felt happier if you and Alice were not in the house. But with my knowledge of Moriarty, I fear that he may have the place under observation. And the departure of you and your daughter might make him suspicious. Is that why you and Dr. Watson are wearing those filthy farmer's clothes, Mr. Holmes? Precisely, my dear. Hmm. Eight o'clock. Time we were beginning our vigil. Mr. Kenmore, you will remain on guard with Alice here in her room. No matter what happens in the library, this is your post of duty. Very well, Mr. Holmes. You have your service revolver, Watson? Certainly. Come then. We must be concealed and in readiness for our visitor at whatever hour he may arrive. <laughs> o'clock. I'm so cramped from standing behind these curtains that I thought it must be the morning. What price the peaceful countryside now, Watson? Well, I must say what? that... I... What is it? Faint sound. On the gravel path, it might be a nocturnal animal or... Oh, there it is again. Footsteps. Is your gun ready, Watson? Ready, Holmes. It'll probably come through the French windows. It's the most inviting entrance. On your guard... Covered. The light switch, Watson, with your left hand. There. 
Well, Professor Moriarty, we meet again. If it isn't Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, keep that gun on him, Watson, while I see if he's carrying a weapon. And render myself liable to a long prison sentence. My dear Holmes, your retirement to pastoral pursuits must have impaired your reasoning powers. It's all right, Watson. He's unarmed. You can lower your hands now, Professor, but I'd strongly advise against making any sudden moves. Yes, I wish he would, the dirty traitor. I'm inclined to agree with your sentiments, Watson. Moriarty... For once, I intend to take the law into my own hands. I can forgive a criminal, or a forger, or a thief, or even a murderer. But a traitor is something else. I don't understand what you're driving at. Certain backward Balkan countries, Moriarty, have an extremely convenient system of disposing of unwanted prisoners. They are invariably shot while attempting to escape. You, you wouldn't dare. You who have always stood on the side of the law. Have you ever known me to break my word? I assure you, Moriarty that unless you consent to turn over von Schaling to us, together with any information you have for him, you will be dead by the time I count ten. And I promise you that Watson won't hesitate either. No, you bet I won't, Holmes. Take your choice, Moriarty. One, two, three, four. All right, Holmes. You win this time. Hmm. A wise decision. Where were you to meet von Schaling? And what were you to deliver to him? At midnight tomorrow, on a beach six miles south of here. He has a rendezvous there with a submarine that is to take him back to Germany. And the figures on the new cruisers are hidden at my lodgings in Portsmouth. We'll keep that appointment with von Schaling tomorrow night. And to make sure that you have no chance for further treachery, you'll remain with us until he's in our hands. This is the spot, Professor Moriarty? 500 yards south of the abandoned dock, yes. Very well. What yeah. Watson and I will remain here behind these bushes. You, Professor, will walk out alone onto the sands. I intend to take no chances of scaring off our current quarry. I haven't much choice in the matter. Just a moment. Yes? Remember that we have you in plain sight, that the moonlight is strong, and that the slightest sign of treachery will be the signal for your well-deserved execution. I won't forget, Mr. Holmes. I think he's going scot-free, Holmes. You cannot hate it more than I do, Watson. But letting him go free is a cheap price to pay for the scotching of his plans and the capture of von Schaling. Here comes a car. This is von Schaling. No one else would be on this deserted road at this hour of night. The car's stopping. There's only one man in it. He's getting out. It is von Schaling. Ha! Ah, yeah, Professor. I knew I could depend on you. Right, Watson. Uh, put up your hands, you. Look out, Watson. Quick work, Watson. Oh, curse you, Moriarty. You have betrayed me. Precisely, Herr von Schelling. But why should the fact that a traitor will engage in a double betrayal surprise you? He'll be all right, Holmes. Finding a nasty flesh wound in his leg. Well, Mr. Holmes, you have the papers and the spy. I've kept my part of the bargain. Now you keep yours. Don't worry, Moriarty, I shall. But you can count yourself lucky that the stakes for which we were playing were far more value than your traitorous life. I promise you that next time we meet, you will pay your long overdue reckoning. <laughs> I shall look forward to it. Au revoir. Till our next meeting. What infernal cheek. I hate to see him go free. No more than I do, Watson. Well, at least we've had the best of the bargain. Now let's load our prisoner into the car. <laughs> And who are you, anyway? The devil? Oh, hardly so eminent a personage, von Schelling. My name is Sherlock Holmes. Ah, so. I might have guessed. Oh, he's fainted. Just as well, perhaps. Here, Holmes, we'll, we'll put him in the back seat of the, of the, of the car. Well, you've got the spy... That finishes that. I wonder. There's an east wind coming, Watson. East wind? Well, I don't think so, Holmes. It's particularly warm. <laughs> Good old Watson. You're the one fixed point in the changing age. There's an east wind coming all the same. Such a wind has never blew on England yet. It will be cold and bitter. 
a good many of us may wither before its blast. But it's God's own wind nonetheless, and a cleaner, better, stronger land will lie in the sunshine when the storm has cleared. Start the car up, Watson. It's time we were on our way. <laughs> May I introduce one of the outstanding authorities on feminine beauty? He is John Robert Powers, who has received hundreds of thousands of requests from girls all over the country, girls wishing to join his exclusive Powers Girls. And now, especially transcribed, Mr. John Robert Powers. Good evening, friends. I'm very happy tonight to bring along one of my very attractive Powers Girls, Miss Pat Fordyce. And maybe we can coax Pat to tell us what she considers one of the most important requirements of a Powers girl. How about it, Pat? Well, I think one of the most important requisites is lovely, shining, bright hair. Hair that reflects natural, glossy luster and highlight. I certainly agree, Pat. And I heartily agree with you about using cremel shampoo. Yes, Pat, I advise all my Powers girls to use cremel shampoo. In my opinion, no other shampoo leaves the hair more radiant with such natural gloss and highlights. Why, I've interviewed hundreds of girls with beautiful faces, but with such dull, lifeless-looking hair. Then, after using Premal Shampoo, what a difference. Their hair emerges a vision of shining beauty. I love its rich, velvety oil base, too. A very good point, Pat. Because this oil base actually helps hair from becoming dry or brittle. Premal Shampoo also whips up a wonderful, luxurious, active foam, even in the hardest water. Yes, Pat, to glamour bathe the hair, you simply can't beat Cremel Shampoo. And I sincerely recommend it to every girl who is discouraged about the way her hair looks. To every girl who wants her hair to look its shining best. Thank you, Mr. Powers, and also your very, very beautiful Powers girls, Miss Pat Fordyce. And now, Dr. Watson, what about next week? Well, now, let me see. Uh, next week, I think I shall tell you a weird story about the strange experience... Mr. John Scott Eccles, wherein Holmes solves the murder of a certain Aloysius, or as you say, Aloysius Garcia, and finds a kitchen full of voodoo fetishes. I call the story The Adventure of Wisteria Lodge. <laughs> Tonight's Sherlock Holmes adventure was suggested by an incident in Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's story, His Last Bow. Nigel Bruce appeared by permission of California Pictures. Tom Conway through the courtesy of Eagle Lion Pictures. The Sherlock Holmes series is produced by Tom McKnight, with original music composed and conducted by Alex Steinert. This is Joseph Bell speaking for Kremel Hair Tonic and Kremel Shampoo and inviting you to listen next week at the same time when Dr. Watson will tell us about the adventure of Wisteria Lodge. This is ABC, the American... Shampoo present the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes, starring Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson and Tom Conway as Sherlock Holmes. Now, once again, here we are in Dr. Watson's comfortable study. Good evening, Dr. Watson. Good evening, Mr. Burrell. Sit down, my boy, and make yourself comfortable. Thank you. <sighs> Warm tonight, isn't it? It is indeed. Quite summery, in fact. Tonight, you're going to tell us about the strange adventure of Mr. John Scott Eccles at Wisteria Lodge, aren't you? Yes, and I think I can promise you that you will find it weird enough to make you shiver mm. it in, in spite of the weather. Good. I can hardly... Damn it. Man, uh, if you want that cross successful it? look which stands out Bam. in the crowd, remember, well-groomed hair means a lot to a man's appearance. And I'm sure you'll want to know why so many of America's most prosperous and successful men use Kreml hair tonic. You see, Kreml contains a special combination of hair grooming ingredients which is found in no other hair tonic. This is why Kreml gives a man's hair such a natural, well-groomed look. 
quiet keeps her You feel sleepy? Rock. Yet Kremel never leaves her looking You feel sleepy? Boy yo, or do you, do I sound sleepy? Just make this test, man. After you apply, Kremel, rub your I sound sleepy. Face. I shouldn't be. I I took a nap before doing this. Notice how no greasy film comes off on your hand or your headband. Kremel always gives your hair such a handsome, clean-cut appearance, as if your barber had just combed it. At the end of the day, your hair looks just as neatly groomed as when you combed it in the morning. Buy a bottle at any drug counter. K-R-E-M-L, Kremel hair tonic. Now, Dr. Watson, what about the strange experience... I feel asleep. <laughs> it was a bleak, wintry day. The year was 1892, I believe. We were in our rooms in Baker Street, and Holmes had received a telegram during lunch. He'd read it and sent off a reply. The lunch things were subsequently cleared away, and Holmes was standing in front of the fireplace... Okay, if you feel sleepy, go get sleep. Go get sleep, bud. Watson, you are supposed to be a man of letters. How would you define the word grotesque? Grotesque? Oh, it's okay. Go get sleep. You're fine. There's more in it than that. Grotesque. I mean, underlying suggestion of the tragic and the terrible. This is why all this introspection. Okay. been using the word now. So let's. Let's review what we got. Let's review what we got. We got this so far, which is really good. We did really good today. So far, we got, we've got, yeah, we got that done. We got the sketch done. Which is far more, which is getting quicker and quicker, which is good. And we have a great idea for what uh, what the character's doing. So I think we're pretty much fine. I think if we, if you want to go to bed, this is for you. I did. I wanted you to be happy. If you want to go to bed, go to bed. Cause I'll, I'll probably, yeah, all the roses, all the roses look real good. I need to fix this one though. Always when you're looking at it, you always find something else. Uh, but I'm gonna fix this one. Give it a, uh, tighten it up a bit. It needs to be tightened up a bit or, uh, a few more petals to fix it up a little bit. I'm gonna tighten it up, clean it up, and then I'm gonna finish up with the, all the coloring. I'm gonna color it, and then I'm gonna give it a base uh, shading, and then I'm gonna give it uh, a bit of lighting, and it should be good. But yeah, you're gonna have a color. Uh, the question is, is if you wanted it uh, background or no background. If you want no background, that's totally fine, real easy. I can make it as uh, I can make it like the what I did for my emotes. Just color it and then have no background, and I can send it to you, and you can just put it in whatever background you want. Uh, sorry about the legs, though. Do apologize about the legs. I I'm sorry. I just feel it looks better without the legs right now, but I can add the legs later if you want. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Red White White Raven. Oh my God. Oh, goodness gracious. Thank you, Shy. I do appreciate it. Oh my goodness. Oh, Shy. Goodness gravy. Oh my goodness, everybody. How's everybody doing? Goodness, gosh, gravy. Oh. I was in the middle of doing Ladev's picture right here. So, I'm almost done with it. Okay, alright. Hey, Ted Warthog. The Forbidden Chocolate? <laughs> uh, if you don't need it, you don't... 
If you don't want a background, that's go all good. Oh my good. Thank you, Red White Raven. I appreciate it. Oh goodness. I mean, if that's the case, I can go. I can go for thirty more minutes. Okay. I'm doing good. Doing good. Yeah, A10's here as well. I am great. I hope your stream was good. I hope it was incredible and amazing. Hold up. Hold up. All right, 30 more minutes just for you guys. Hold up. But if uh, Shy Red Fox is getting some rest, I totally understand. There you go, Shy. Yeah, Spice Marine. Oh, yeah, A10. Good job, A10. Hype. Some real hype over here. Hold up. Let's... There we go. I consult you. Signed, J.S. Eccles. You sent from the Chang Cross Post Office. All right. I wonder if it's a man or a woman. Man, of course. No woman would have sent a reply page to me. Yes, you do. No. You get to sleep deprive me for just a little bit longer, but only then. Yeah. Nice. Nice A10. Oh, it was fun as hell, especially at the end where I was talking about one hell of a dream I had. Oh, shit. I hope it was well. I, I hope the dream was all right. Uh, no problem. Real easy. No problem, Shy. Hope you've been feeling good, better, by the way. I know you've been feeling a bit off. Hope you've been feeling better, Shy. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh my goodness. And yet one glance at the somewhat uh, disheveled state of your attire shows that the uh, disturbance dates from the moment of your waking. That's good. Because if you weren't, I was gonna, I was gonna be like, okay, if that's the case, we'll we'll draw you a quick little thing, and then we'll we'll get back to drawing regular stuff. Because I was worried about you today. I was thinking of you, and I was like, oh man, I hope Shy's okay. Really hope Shy's okay. I worry about I worry about so many people. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I want all my internet friends to be okay. I want my, all my IRL friends to be okay. I want everybody to be okay. <laughs> oh, no problem. No problem. I just worry about... I, I'm just a worry wart. That's all. Oh, Thank you. Thank you, Red White Raven. I appreciate it. I don't know about everybody else, but I appreciate it. Mr. Eccles was on the verge of... I'm just fixing this metallic rose over here. She's, uh, because this lady's got roses all over her. Just cleaning up the roses. So, I'm just working on this. You guys are incredible and amazing, and I I hope all of you stay incredible and amazing. I hope all of you feel, uh, if you're not feeling your best, you know, I hope you feel better. Remember, it's like a giant cinnamon bun. When you think of a rose, it's it's basically a giant cinnamon bun. How many were there in his household? He had uh, a sort of butler, a countryman of his, named Jose, and a half-breed cook called 
Who ordered a pizza over here? E. E. Goodness. You guys are so exciting. And great. Thank you for coming in. I do appreciate it. And those who stay. Dude. Go do what you need to. I'm totally fine with that. Clip it. Clip it up. Clip it up. You got this. You know that I believe in you. You know that. I can't not believe in you. It's in my nature. I am opening up my commissions. Yes, I will start doing commissions. Mm. I'm basically doing a commission right now, but I'm doing this as a uh, as a gift to uh, to Lada. Doing something real nice for him. Because it's because it's easy to be nice. Yeah. So I'll I'll set up my prices and whatnot. I'll set up everything. My cheapest thing is sketches, which is obvious. I know you weren't. That's why I did it. I did it because it's a nice gesture. And I like practicing. I love to practice before I start uh, working fully on my comic book. Because I've got part one ready. It's just I gotta talk to my editor to see what I need to change to fix it up so we can get uh, fully working on it. Oh. Thinking about getting your stuff to sell? Ooh. Ooh. My goodness. You can always show us. We're we're always excited to see people's artwork. We love to see people's artwork. Yeah, hell, everybody sends me their artwork. I I I love seeing everybody's work. I love seeing people grow as artists. We are we are very supportive over here. Not not like oh uh, you could do it if you put your mind to it. No, we believe in you. We actually believe in you uh, here. Oh, goodness. I, well, I am. I mean, if you're not, I'm not going to... I mean, there's nothing I can do. I, I, I guess you're just not supportive. Not supported on all platforms. Very cash money. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. What did that get me? Uh, A10, why did that get me? <laughs> That's so dumb. Not very cash money of you. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that saying. That's so dumb. It's real dumb. I, I, I can't remember. I can't place where that's from, but I love it. Memes can't die. Well, A10, A uh, thank you. Memes cannot die. Oh, goodness. 
Oh, goodness. Well, I hope the jewelry goes well. I can't wait to see it when it gets done. I mean, it's a good one. It uh, it means so much to everyone. It's like, get that shit out of my fucking face. It's a quick, like, get it out of here. Fucking move it. I will have to go down there. I'll have to go into Fox's... Uh, Fox's Discord and take a look. Check a look. Aww. Aww, yeah, you talked about that yesterday. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Hold up. Let's see. Let's see. Hold up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So cute. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So precious. We do ask what the cat is doing, but we never ask how the cat is doing. You know what? Agreed. We don't ask how, because we don't give a fuck because he doesn't give a fuck about us. He could go fuck himself. Cats don't care about you. That's a that's a lie. That's a lie perpetuated by the media. <laughs> Cats don't give two fucks about you. <laughs> I will die on this hill. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I do care about fo I do care about all living animals. Even the ones that don't give two fucks about me. Even the ones that don't care. And what good would it do if I did? Ah, then it's settled. I suggest we take a run down to Isha, eh, Watson? I find I have a longing for the country. Yeah, I'm coming too. Splendid. Suppose we tonight at Mr. Garcia's poetically named villa. What was it? Ah, yes. Mysteria Lodge. All right. I fancy it'll be a case of Cherche la Femme. You whipped a nay nay. Oh, French. Uh, look for the woman. Oh, what woman? Jeeves. Goodness gracious. Mistaken, she's in a decidedly dangerous position. Oh no. Oh no. I'm gonna have to fix this breastplate just a little bit. Just a little bit. Discoveries on the visit to Wisteria Lodge. 
every man who takes pride in his appearance no. should know that handsome, healthy-looking hair needs a hygienic scalp. That's why when you buy a hair tonic, be sure to get your money's worth. Yeah. Don't settle for just any hairdressing when you can enjoy the extra advantages of Cremel hair tonic. This highly specialized hair tonic contains a special combination of I mean, ingredients. The like it's, of which it's has very never easy to do it. It's like that. Tonic. It's like that. You just dab. Dab on all of your haters. And, and then they'll take out their glocks and then <laughs> you won't be dabbing no more. Dab to the grave. <laughs> Uh, there is no meme. There is only a thread. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that pouty lips and stuff like that. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, so good. Cremel. Now, Dr. Watson, you and Sherlock Holmes went down to Wisconsin. Just when you Mark. need to look your the best. That night found us walking in the neighborhood of Isha. It was pitch black, and there was a wind blowing. What? Look here, Holmes. Why go plotting? What did you redeem? Like Joke now. Uh, well. Okay. Uh, why did the chicken cross the road? We promised the start we'd pick him up at the villa. Yes, but I. No idea. Well, neither did the uh, uh, neither did the coroner when he found the body. The detective is still looking. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Amusing. <laughs> uh, what did Batman say uh, to Robin when he got into the Batmobile? What did he say? Buckle up. <laughs> Welcome back, Shy. I was asked to tell jokes, so I'm telling jokes. here we don't want to get under people's skins I mean I don't want to be I just don't want to be canceled that's all I just don't I don't want my career to end up in flames before it even fucking began I love you guys but come on don't be <laughs> don't do that don't do that We don't want to get canceled on Twitter. I mean, or or any other platform, for that matter. I would like to. I would like to have a career. But I mean, if I go on YouTube, they don't give two fucks lately. So I'm like, okay. Don't care. All right. 
Oh, I know. They'll be like, mm. They'll find some reason. They'll, they'll just shake their heads and I'll be like, oh, well. I guess it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, YouTube was something else, and now it's something else again. <laughs> oh, goodness. But that's neither here nor there. I do like terrible jokes. If you need any more terrible jokes, uh, I am I'm down to clown. I could make more bad, uh, bad jokes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I hope you uh I hope your clipping went well, Shy Red Fox. If you wanted to share your clips, share your clips. If you don't want to share your clips, it's fine. It's okay. It's alright. No one's gonna get mad. Also check me out on Instagram. <laughs> check me out. I'll be here ironically shitposting. Alright. Ironically? Oh my goodness. Uh, ahead of the, uh, ahead of his time. Not re- I'm not really shitposting, guys. <laughs> oh. Whoa, an ad? No. Oh, no. Oh. You're not getting my ad revenue here, Oscar Meyer. You can shove it. It's been a while since we had an ad. Damn. It's been quite a bit. Instagram. Oh no! The horror! The absolute horror! I will. I'll fear you. I mean, I could do that. Oh no! Who was sneaking back to get his voodoo fetish? 
Well, I gotta ban that bot now. No, no. That poor little big battle barracks bot. <laughs> I gotta ban him now. Here's something of real interest for our lady. <laughs> uh, I gotta, I gotta ban uh, poor little big battle barracks. He's just a, he's just a bot now. I think he's a bot now. I'm doing the buckles like I always do the buckles because it's real easy to do the buckles like that. Powers models were among the first to discover that no Blam. leaves hair more shiny. Dab it on me. Can't expect that. Uh, it's not a cream shampoo. It's not a harsh soap or drying detergent. Cremel shampoo is entirely AFK. After a cremel shampoo, the hair oh my goodness. radiates natural brilliant highlights. And you guys are great. even has a built-in oil base. Which helps keep hair from becoming dry or brittle. It rinses out so easily. I don't know what kind of glove style you want, but I, you know what? I assume you just want it looking decent, looking nice and decent. I think I know what you want. Don't you worry, Masaladov. I got you taken care of. I know you were worried there for a second, but I, I think I got it. I think I got it. You know, I think I know what you want. It's a strange story. A very strange story of violence. Very strange story of violence. You know, there is all these normal stories of violence. Uh, this is going to be a strange one. You're going to you're going to be like, "What the hell?" Oh my god. Ironically. Okay, you have an amazing one now. Thank you for coming in, Shy. Goodness gravy. So yeah, guys. It's looking great. We got some stuff done. So we actually got this mostly done. Uh, the body is almost done. And then... Gotta finish this part of it. Legs and shield and banner. The white flag. And then we're gonna color it and then it should be good. Yeah! And then Latov's got... Uh, got themselves a uh, uh, Jean of Arc but yeah let's see who is still on I think Kat Von's on let's see Kat Von Kat Von Kat Von alone in the world with a little Kat Von let's see let's go to my twitch Let's get this raid ready. Let's raid Shadow Legends. Unless somebody else is on. Let's see. Uh, vexing streams. I mean, there's always. There's always. I just. I love. I love going to Cat Von though. I always love her art and stuff like that. I love showing everybody her art. But, you know what? You know who really needs it? Dazed Eyes needs it. I will raid the dazed. Just, when you guys go in, just say, hey. And this gun I found. Not a problem, Red White Raven. Not a problem. She's going to kill you with kindness in this gun I found. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, raid. Dazed. Eyes. Yep. There we go. Now, I want you guys to say, I hope you have an amazing one. Hold up. Is that the... Hold up. Cancel that. Cancel that. Yeah, that's the right one. Hold up. Hold up. Reset that one. Let's try again. Hold up. <laughs> Hold up. I wanted to make sure that was the right one. I didn't want to just... There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. Everybody ready? Are you guys ready? You guys are amazing. Not a problem. Not a problem. You guys are amazing. You guys are incredible. Stay positive. Stay excellent. And just, you know, stay for a second. And just say, you know, I hope you have an amazing stream. Like, that's all that you need to say, and then you can you can do whatever you want afterwards. Just be positive, be incredible, stay incredible, and you know I'll see you guys later. So, you guys are stupendous, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And end of stream.